Well, a very warm welcome to the break desk here in the Huayana Golf Resort and Casino. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. And Randy, an extended welcome to the viewers, obviously, tuning in from wherever you are tuning in from the world, around the world. It's the Triton Super High Roller Series main event final table time, Randy. And it's the largest field of 100K that we've had so far. 135 runners in this one smashing the previous record of 130 in London of 2019, if I'm not mistaken. 2019 sounds 2019. Right. Uh, And well, Randy, you know, over the last two days, we've seen the best in the business compete here in Hoyana, in the Hoyana Resort. But before we go into the particulars of the main event, obviously, there was a new record set here last night, one of the biggest talking points coming out of this series in Vietnam. And it was that of a certain Jason Kuhn taking down a record-breaking fifth Triton title in that 50k turbo. Randy, a couple of obvious questions coming now that we have our five time champion is, you know, firstly, the person that he was tied on four with, Mikita Badziakowski, in your shoes as someone that has competed at the higher stakes, does that get added as an additional motivator now for Mikita? Almost certainly that Mikita is very well motivated. You know, they were trying to race who's going to get number five first. It was Jason Kuhn. We do have a lot of short deck events coming. They're going to be gunning hard, playing for that maybe sixth or fifth trophy, depending on who we're talking about. Uh, but Makita is a is a heavy fighter, right? Like, he's been grinding this high stakes scene for a very long time. Very good at no limit hold'em. Very good at short deck. You know, it, it's going to it'll bug him a little bit, but he, he'll get in there and fight. Now, Jason, obviously, moving one notch ahead of Makita with that fifth title. Is that, you know, we've we've spoken about the money at these events. We've spoken about what it means to really, like, separate yourself from your peers, you, you know, your Triton track record in turn of earnings. But what does it mean to have the most as a player of anything? What, you know, in this case, Jason Kuhn now really separating himself from everyone, not just Makita. It, it means a lot for Jason Kuhn, you know. He's very well respected amongst his peers, a lot of fans as well. You know, he works very hard on the game. You know, he spends a lot of time studying. He spends a lot of time talking to his peers, um, discussing hands, and he wants to be the very best in poker, especially in Triton series, right? Like, he's battling very hard in both Nolan and Short Deck from the get-go, right? He was in the Short Deck streets right in, right from the get-go at Montenegro in right. Jeju and has been playing every single high-stakes bind he can. It's just really nice to see, and it means a lot to him. I know that he's not going to stop just at number five. He's going for number six immediately. Well, that's that's the immediate question, right? Is you know, We still have, although this is the No Limit Holder main event, it's the end of the series for the the, sh the the long deck, rather. But now we have short deck events coming up. You know, The crazy story would really be is if he does get to six before anyone else gets to five, and that is the question because it's now coming into the back end of the series where we do have our short deck events coming up. Yeah, definitely possible. I mean, we've had people come in and win two titles in one series. You know, Michael Adama won two Nolan right. Hold'em events. I'm sure there's multiple people in uh, back in Montenegro and Jeju who shipped two titles. I think Ivan Lau actually might have shipped two titles. Yeah. 
if I'm right, um, back in Montenegro or is it Jeju? But uh, yeah, no, it's it's gonna happen. It's very likely. No, I'm say likely. It can happen. It can definitely happen. There's still events to come here, and I'm sure you know Jason and Makita will be talking or taking it to the felt rather in the 25k that starts today, the short deck event. Uh, but the first short deck event of the series. But for the rest of us, it's very much time to obviously turn our attention to the reason that we're all here today, and that is the record breaking main event 135 runners 3 million 250 thousand for first and we're coming in with some i mean i don't even really know how to describe this final table in the form of caliber of player that we have at this feature table just world class if we take a quick look in the triton poker plus app to allow Shikurchi coming in as chip leader. Just off the bat, before we dive into the specifics about any of the players, is there, is there anything that really stands out to you about the way this final table is set before we've even dealt a single hand? I mean, it sh you should be looking straight at the bottom, right? It's Roman Hobbick here. Five big blinds. The guy in eighth place, Nick Petrangelo, sitting on 18 big blinds. You know, there's everyone's going to wait around for him. Even, you know, the guys who are sitting comfortable like Fedor Holtz and Dar Daniel Smirkovich. They want to see whether he's going to bust. Pay jumps are huge at a final table like this, right? It's 3.2 milli up top. Right. Um, really, it would be a mistake not to see whether he busts or not. And it's really interesting because he is on the left of the chip leader. So what is more often than not going to happen is when Shakurchi opens, when Mateos opens, and if Rabbits gets out of the way, those middling stacks, once you get around the table, Petrangelo, Soiza, Adams, all kind of sat together. They have to proceed so carefully, given that there is the presence of that five big blind stack, as you already mentioned. And it's like, OK, what do we do then? Do we wait for him to double? Or are we just handcuffed and we allow the likes of Shikurchi, who we know can be incredibly aggressive? He picks his spots well. Do we let number one on Spain's all time money list, Mateos, just kind of dictate how the table plays out? Well, what's the play? Really, you explained it pretty well. They are just going to have to wait around. If they do anything but stay handcuffed, they can be really lighting so much equity um, on the line. It's just, it's unfortunate. It really it is. is the way it is. You know, when they're going to put some resistance against the chip leaders, they're most certainly going to have the goods, but that's okay. Let that guy hopefully bust out. If he doubles up, sure, then we got some time to swing around some chips, but uh, all eyes on Roman. Well, talking of all eyes on Roman, how about all eyes on our chip leader to allow hedge fund manager, I believe, non-pro, Raid a lot has you know done it all in poker and he finds himself here, chip leader of the final nine. Do you think he's the the, the best non-pro? Just like when you think of the non-pros that come to these series, Talao has just been in the game for so long. Guaranteed, if you told me who the best non-pros in the game that comes to these training series, they're most certainly the top. Top two or top three guys for sure, possibly the very best. He has had so much track record playing the online tournaments. You know, he goes to all the live scene, play the biggest buy-ins. He's won multiple titles in so many different series. He really is just phenomenal. And, you know, he knows how to apply pressure. He understands the concept of ICM, but he's mm -hmm. willing to kind of just pounce on that fact on these people who are going to take it a little bit too far and chip up. Well, he has two of the game's finest on his left that are going to be making it a tough task to roll, uh, to play the role of table captain. Adrian Mateos, number one on Spain's all-time money list. Two seats over Fedor Holtz, number one on Germany's all-time money list. Two of the, great, uh, the game's best, both still so young with a lot to achieve and prove. Or maybe not pr prove, maybe not the right word as they've obviously proven themselves time and time again in different formats. But look, as the chip leader, those two guys on your left, maybe not the best seat draw in the world for our chip leader. Now, no easy corner on this FT. You know, we've spoken about the short stack of Hrabets, five bigs. But look, you don't get the number one title on GG for tournament earnings in 2022 without knowing how to navigate spots like this. I mean, I can guarantee you that Hrabets has been at a final table as equally as tough as this with a similar stack set up. So look. You know, five bigs. Let's see how he navigates that. Coming in as the short stack, going to have some very real ICM implications on everyone, right? I'm 
Yeah, I'm certainly sure he knows how to play five big blinds. Like, he's studied all these ICM spots. He's going to know, like, oh, there's some raises and some heavy action in front of him. Maybe he can get away from some spots, which seems like he should be getting it in. You know, we can't count him out because we all know in poker you can spin it up. Five big blinds turns into 10, maybe 20. There we go. I mean, it's very realistic. Now, some very epic storylines that could come out of this. Winfred Yu looking for his third title, his career best cash of 1.34 million. 10 caches on Triton. Soiza, by the way, with the win here, would not only become a two-time Triton trophy winner, but he would move up to third on the Malaysian all-time money list, second only to our founders, Paul and Richard. So there's a lot more at stake than just money here. We're talking reaching the tops of your country's money list. You know, we have Fedor, number one on Germany's all-time money list, Mateos, number one on Spain's all-time money list, a Petrangelo looking to cross 30 million in live earnings. There's, there's a lot at stake here, Randy. And, you know, I think we're, we're in for a treat when it comes to poker, when it comes to storylines, and when it comes to crowning a champion here, 3.25 million up top. Yeah, we're definitely in for a treat. We know these guys are going to try to gun and, you know, like, sure, all those record... It's really nice, right? Like getting extra trophies, getting extra prize money to your name. But, you know, it is still 3.2 million up top. It is hard to be a Triton main event champion. One of them will get it done today. Well, 324,000 guaranteed for these final nine players. We're going to throw it down to Ali Najat to introduce the final table. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final table of the Triton Super High Roller Series Vietnam main event the richest 100K buy-in tournament in history with a record-breaking 135 entries and a prize pool of 13.5 million. After two grueling days of competition, ultimately only nine players remain and it's time to bring them out. In seat one with a stack of 1.8 million, Nick Petrangelo, a 36-year-old professional from Massachusetts. He's worked his way up poker's ladder and now finds himself as a regular in the upper echelons of the game. In seat two, with a stack of 2.3 million, Michael Soiza. This 33-year-old poker player and co-owner of the APT from Malaysia burst onto the scene in 2015 and has, impress has been impressing us ever since. In seat three, with a stack of 2.5 million, we welcome Tim Adams, the 2019 Triton Jeju Main Event Champion. This 36-year-old pro from Canada is one of the most feared names on the global poker circuit. In seat four, with a stack of 5.3 million, it's Daniel Smilkovich. This Triton newcomer has reached the final table in his first attempt. At 32 years of age, a German pro who's been impressing us all with not just his play, but that lucky red tracksuit. In seat five, with a stack of 3.1 million, it is 59-year-old Winfred Yu. A Triton OG. Winfred has taken part at every Triton festival dating all the way back to the Philippines in 2016, where he finished fifth in the main event and is looking to improve upon that finish here today. In seat six, with a stack of 7.4 million and the chip lead, it is our VIP, Talal Shakurchi. This 59-year-old hedge fund manager from the UK is widely considered as one of the best non-professional poker players in the world. In seat seven, with a stack of seven million, it is Adrian Mateos. Just 28 years of age, this pro from Spain already has a decade of experience behind him and has been a force on the Triton scene since 2017 when he finished fourth at the Macau main event. In seat eight, with a stack of 525K, it is Roman Rabitz. At just 27 years of age, Roman is the youngest player at this final table, an online sensation from the Czech Republic who has also made it to poker's biggest stage in his first attempt. And last, but by no means least, in seat nine, rounding out our final table with a stack of four million, it is none other than Fedor Hulse. 
At just 29 years of age, he is one of the game's most decorated players with a second place in the Macau Triton main event in 2017. All eyes are on the German Phenom. Olympia, let's draw for the button. Players, you will have 32 minutes roughly remaining at the 50, 100, 100 blind level. Next break will be in one hour and 20 minutes. Button will be in seat three with Tim Adams. We wish you all good luck, shuffle up, and deal. Well, how about it, Randy Lou? It's official. First hand of the Triton Super High Roller Series Vietnam main event is about to be dealt with just moments away from kicking things off here. What an exciting way to introduce the final table, by the way. I don't know whether we're about to watch Conor McGregor square off against whoever he was fighting back in the day. Do you see Talao, by the way? You know, we're talking about his presence at the table as a non-pro. That little camera intro, I don't know, had me, I couldn't even maintain eye contact from the booth, let's be honest. Fader as well, Fader looked pumped up. Like Fader was just like, you know what boys, I know who I am. Number one on Germany's all-time money list. For most of these guys, good. right? Like this is going to be one of the biggest prizes they've ever played for up top. Record-breaking field. It's you don't get this too often. Time to play your best. Now at this table, six of the nine players looking for a career best score. Only Fedor, Mateus, and Adams have one more than what's at stake here. 3,250,000 for first, 324,000 guaranteed as we dive back into this. Fedor kicking things off with an open from the low jack. <coughs> first hand, always nice to flop top pair, top kicker. Winfred got a little piece that he's going to be able to pay off the flop with. Texture, 5 cm. Considerations in effect straight off the bat, hand number one. Fatal coming with half pot. Yeah, a little bit sizable. A lot of guys come in for third pot. Let's see how Winford responds to this. Still has middle pair. No back doors. Wet board texture against, you know, the low jack open of Fedor. Early position. Fedor kind of comfortably sat in the middle of the pack. But Winfred, going to keep him honest for at least one. Feels like this type of holding is like check, call, flop, and then end up having a tough time realizing a cross turn and river, especially against someone as tough as Fedor. Yeah, Winfred basically hoping for the check through after the check call on the flop. As played so far, Fedor, comfortable turn card for him. Doesn't really have to sweat much of a hand besides A7 specifically. Should see some value bet incoming for Fedor Holtz. Winfred, the effective stack, 2.5 million behind. setting up a very natural river SPR of around 0 0.5 this 950,000 bet on the turn yeah, pretty large bet here Fader trying to extract value from worse ace Winfred's out don't blame him we spoke about it earlier Roman sitting on five big blinds no reason to try to get out of line now Oh, it's good to win the first one. Viewers all around the world still talking about those final table introductions. Shout out to the production team, of course, the Share Hands crew, all the staff here. Really just working around the clock. I mean, 
not just these two weeks. We, we get the good part of the gig. There's a lot that goes behind the scenes, and they work really hard. You know, you don't get this good production from nothing. No, we just show up and talk into a mic. These guys are here weeks ahead to set up the stage, ship the equipment from God knows where. Rabetz, five bigs, ace four. I'm gonna find the mark. Rabetz is gonna be forced to put in over one third of his chips in just a couple of hands once he hits that big blind. But for now, gets out of the way. You can see his girlfriend Monica on the rail there. Yep, played some Triton events earlier. Biggest live FT of his career. Had 880k in earnings prior to coming to this Triton series. Came second in event number one for 653k. He's the one everyone's watching for now. So he is the shortest stack to allow defending the Queen 3-0. It's a bit of a sticky big blind defense, but he's trying to leverage his big chip stack, expecting to get you know some free turn cards that wouldn't normally happen if he was a shorter stack, since they know his stack is threatening to their tournament life. Petrangelo, ace-9 suited. Middling aces do check a bit more often. Does check, check. Wow. With queen high and a gut shot to the lower end of the straight. Opts to knuckle it on over to Petrangelo, who, by the way, one of the stories we didn't really talk too much about in the pregame show, had an 0 for 23 record prior to coming to this series and has already found three caches here prior to this final table. Came fifth in the 25k GG Super Millions for 286,000. Four caches. Queen high, no good. Nikki P chipping up to just north of 20 bigs. Triton career best. Petrangelo. What a way to get the monkey off of your back, by the way. Biggest 100k in the history Not a single of our game. Since it started. Final nine. Still waking up. How You're about this lineup? <laughs> tense, tense, tense. Some OGs of the game, Talal Shikurchi and Winfred Yu. <coughs> Roman's got to speak up soon. Big blind incoming. King three suited. Doesn't seem like enough hand. Queen for Soiza. Yeah, opening into the big blind of Mateos obviously never easy. Yeah, but it's a mandatory raise. What are you going to do if you got Ace Queen? Timothy Adams, two sevens. This is a hand that normally would want to get played, but I know Adams is very well aware of the short stack of Roman, who's going to be the big blind next. I think he's going to lay it down, Henry. It's just a lot of bad situations. That's the safest one. Yeah, feel, feels like a fold with ICM, right? Yeah. And especially given the fact that Roman is going to be in the, the big blind in the next hand. 94,000 ladder between ninth and eighth. 2.3. Yeah. Just under. You can always get two, behind. Two, Excuse me. And if you have a water, uh, like, like a fold. cold water. Let's see what Adrian Mateos does here with paint low card. Lots of big blinds. He can afford to put some chips in there. He's going to take a flop. And you know, because of the chip distribution amongst everyone, Soiza probably going to give a lot of free cards off, even in position in the betting lead. Let's see. in the middle, every pot you can tell. That it's not as chatty as some of the no, no, no. <laughs> main event tables of yesterday, the feature tables. These guys have probably been up until the early hours of the morning studying the final table drawers. Soiza turns top, top. Castle 
just king high. I do apologize. Flopped a pair of sixes. I thought it was nine five deuce. It's okay. I'll let that one slip. As good as it gets for Michael Soiza. Top pair, top kicker. Normally, this would be a mandatory bet on the turn. But let's see if maybe he comes in for check sometimes, just because of the short stack. Looked like he is going to reach for some chips. Try to get some value. Try to protect his hand. It's a big one, 300k. Now for Mateos, king six off suit. Does beat draws. King of hearts, blocking some straight draws that would bet, say king 10, king jack. Yeah, blocking king queen suited as well, king queen of hearts that is. Does know that Soiza's opening range should be pretty tight right now. He a very well disciplined lay down and he does. This to be expected, Randy, for the first few orbits, just everyone kind of just settling in. Because it's five fives and fives, right? So it's not enough for two for two stacks. So it's easy. I think it's easier for you to see like this, no? Oh yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Maybe uh, sideways. All right, so Soiza's has got stacks of fives, so that everyone can see a stack a little better. What a nice guy. Triton Super High Roller Series Vietnam. 100k no limit holder main event. Potentially about to see our first all-in confrontation of this final table. As Roman Kravets, just five big blinds is in the big and fell yeah. out. Oh, how brutal. He's got one of the worst hands possible. He's put in 200k of his 525k. With seven do suited blind. Adrian comes along. Thank you. How do you navigate this? Do you I just mean, call and hope you hit something and go with it? Do you just fold and preserve that extra 1.5 BBs, which is quite a lot? I mean, if there's someone who studied these spots, it's Roman. Uh, he doesn't look very happy about it. He's out. Get out of the way. Lives to fight another day though, Randy. Still got 3.2 bigs. We've seen spins like that before as we head to the ace, queen, four, top pair, four to allow, middle pair, backdoor spades for Mateos. A yeah, good spot for Talal. He's going to go ahead and take one off. Adrian going to think the queen is good. Put the check check through. Fan of this check, Randy? Bit of pot control? Yeah, it's a bit of pot control. I mean, I wouldn't have mind he had he bet the flop too, but I don't think he expects to get three streets out of A7 anyways. So a bit of, bit of deception. Maybe can pick up two bets from milling pair. I'm going to start by firing the turn. Gets picked up here by Adrian Mateos. Spaniard. Bricks off. It does. All the obvious draws do brick. Maybe see Mateos call Talao down here, depending on sizing. 1.2 out there. Knows that Talao's going to have a wide range on the button. I mean, Talao's the type of guy to try to just go for it sometimes, so. Let's see. Roughly half the pot. Yeah, this might be the size that gets looked up. Just north of half, hasn't gone too greedy. Ah, quick tails. fold. Discipline. Those chips are important. Nice hand reading from Mateos. I think both players played that pretty well. How about it, chat? Mateos just promptly folding on the river. So to 
Lau with an early couple of pickups, extending his lead at the top of the chip counts. All eyes on the Czech Republic's Roman Chavetz with just three bigs. He's taken a couple of blows in his time, not just to his stack, but ex-hockey player. Yeah, I learned about that. Ex-professional hockey player was a uh, turning pro. I believe two years straight, he was just in the lab day in, day out. Just decided to go all in on poker. And we can see not only has it worked out for him online, he's now here for the first time at a super high roller series already with a 653k score in event number one. And final table of the 100k main, 324,000 locked up. Talal getting in there. Fedor Holtz, King Jack, the same hand, gets to complete the action. Comes with a call, it seems, he's reaching for. No reason to get out of line now. Adams had the best of it pre. Still has the best of it on the 5 4 deuce rainbow middle pair. Got shot and backdoor spades. Adams, regardless of where he finishes here, will move up to second on Canada's all time money list. Second only to none other than Daniel Negreanu. He's also looking for his second main event title. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of checks right now on the flop. No one wants to create a situation where all the chips are on the line by the river. You're going to see this a lot at final tables. Action on Fedor. Just because Adam's checking the flop doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't have any, anything. I'm curious to see how Adams approaches his turn. He usually has the best hand. Betting the turn, you know, invites others to bloat the pot, which is what he wants to avoid. Yeah, Adams can still obviously have over pairs in his range that check for some pot control. 825 out there. <laughs> Does come for the delayed C bet. 250,000 to go. Action on Talal. Two overs. <laughs> King Jack. So let's see if he can read into this bet sizing. Hard to make a play of just King Jack high. He's out. Fedor is out. Nice pickup. Every pot seems pretty high pressured, intense, as expected. Roman now will be on the dealer button. Three big blinds. Quick overview of the main stage here at the Hoiana Golf Resort and Casino in Vietnam. The Triton Super High Roller Series main wrapping up the No Limit Hold'em events for those of you that didn't hear already. Late last night, Jason Hewitt. You, you, you don't have to bring golf and wear it. Fifth Triton uh, title. Fifty K Turbo. All right, Timothy Adams going to come along here. Queen Jack of Clubs to open the action. Early position. Two twenty-five. Smerkovic. He's out. When I become a legit golfer. No, we're at a poker. They they want the free marketing. <laughs> <coughs> you know this is a brand called Boogie Boys. Early Boys. Boogie bo uh, Boogie Boys. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, Michael Moore's brand new. So I, I bought one shirt, but I haven't worn it yet. So I, I can't wait yet. I'm not, Two I'm pots not for Timothy yet. Adams in a row. Yeah, up to 3.3. .3. It's hard to learn as an adult. Hard I think it's okay. It's going to be pretty simple. Yeah. A lot of four stacks. I'm covered, but he's sat comfortably in the middle of the pack right now. He's like poker, to be honest. Like, kind of playing with yourself. Hoping to yeah. chip up here and there. Yeah, I mean, it's the stage of the tournament where you know, we're just going to see a lot of folding. Unfortunately, those of you at home expecting to see stacks just go flying in, you know, this is the biggest 100k in the history of the game. 3.2 million up top. And there's a three big blind stack at the table as well. Talal's got Ace King suited. He's been active. Let's see if he gets some resistance. Roman 10 8 suited. Baiting his options. Maybe wait a few more hands, see what you get dealt. Yeah, I mean, this is. This is grim. You talk of uphill climbs in this guy. You're just counting your days. Every I mean, hand. he's at Everest Base Camp right now, looking up at the summit. It's uh, this. This would be quite the story. We've had spin-ups before, but I don't think we've ever had anything. You can't redeem yourself after the eight six of spades. Like showing me is not going to change anything. Nice try. <laughs> What's in front of Roman? So I can't convince you what I need. No, 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 no. It's okay. I know that you know that I know that you know that I know that you. Know. Uh, yeah. Okay. You're about three levels ahead of me. I so. know. <laughs> Evidently not. I would have called it kings if I was. To go time, Henry. Pocket threes, just under three big blinds. Maybe you pushing us in. If I would feel that the blinds would just get out of the way. Mateus can get a heads up with Mateus with an overlay from the big blind to big blind ante and the small blind. One, one three gone. Yeah, one of Roman's <laughs> threes in Fedor's hand. I mean, he's been incredibly patient, or as patient as one can be, coming into this final table. Luck, sir. Thank you. It's allowed. Just saying. Good luck, sir. Good luck, gentlemen. Key flip hit. Kind of unsure who Talal's rooting for because, see, the presence of Roman allows him to just dictate the pace of play at this final table. Ninety-five thousand ladder between ninth and eighth as we head to the nine-eight deuce. Flop so far so good. For the Czech Republic fans out there. Mateus with two overs, running diamonds. And the that Queen of Diamonds big rolling big off. <laughs> giving Mateos 39% equity going to the river. King, Jack, 10, Diamond needed to eliminate Roman. There is the jack of clubs. There's Mateos Rivers, the king high straight, and we lose our first player of the final table. Just seeing Roman shaking hands with Alex Kulev there on the rail. Time to gamble. The yes, queen of five. I think it's online crushers out here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. Roman Kravitz, first ever series for him, I'm sure. Now that he's got the taste of how a Triton Poker Super High Roller Series feels like, Randy, two final tables, the main event, and obviously the 25K GG Super Millions Live Edition that he cashed for 653,000. So cashing for just shy of a million here. Expect to see him again in Cyprus? Yeah, it's a wonderful performance for him at Triton Vietnam. We're definitely yeah. going to see him again at the next stop in Cyprus, right? Like it's, a, not too. it's a closer not flight for him, too. Oh, no, that would have made two pair, right? Can't yeah, be 10-7. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. First casualty. 10-6. <laughs> 
something. Give me a weak ace. You know, um, you call all in the some more chatter the out there now, that what departure the blame blame? of the short yeah, stacks. We just heard some <laughs> laughter going on, some chatter between <laughs> the players, a bit of the yeah, tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, it's hard. Like, we've got call with that hand. Oh, wow. It's a new instant. It's good to lock in that first pay jump. Yeah. You're richer than what you went to bed with. Let's put it that way. 418,400 guaranteed. Jump's getting sizable. 148,000 difference between 7th and 8th. Timothy getting the 3 bet through. Great start to this final table. For Adams. Malkin saying they've all loosened up a bit now, 100%. I mean, that was the the pressure from the get-go was that short stack of Roman. Still some insane ICM implications in effect. Average stack, though, 42 big blinds. Yeah, a lot of game right now, right? Short stack only has more. 19 big blinds. Sounds like a little bit, but it's actually quite a lot to work with at a final table. Yeah. Chip leader, got a... Quite a sizable advantage on Adrian Mateo. 79 big blinds versus 65. Players won't be too reckless as there's not that clear short stack out there like earlier. King Jack Soiza. Trangela opening from the hijack. 20 big blinds. Won't be the loosest range, so he's going to lay down King Jack. Shortest of these final eight. Opening to 2.25. Then Winfred, you're going to pass up on the chance to defend his big. This main, Randy, 135 entries, 90 uniques. 90 uniques is pretty sick, right? Like, I mean, just. That's insane. It's not like it's 20 guys rebuying seven but times each or anything. Flashback to day one where Jason and Seth were talking about the average amount of buy-ins per player. The guesses were in the realm of two to three entries on average. Not the case here. 90 uniques with 135 entries in total. Yeah, I A think lot of people not clicking the rebuy button. I feel like the 2.2 number came out a lot of roughly for rebuys. But yeah, no. People weren't splashing as much, you're saying? I mean, Maybe they were holding. You ever thought about that? Great horse. Short Great stack just kept holding. Couldn't Anyone know what the, the Bitcoin price is at the moment? <laughs> you expecting people to be splashy in 100k? Come on. Let's wait until the bull run. That we're all... <laughs> Everyone's holding their breath. Well, don't or don't hold your double. <laughs> Let's take a look at this hand real quick. Winfred in the small blind. Ace Jack to law. Ace 5 off suit. Yeah, Winfred not one to be pushed around, by the way. We saw him call off on the final table start? bubble. How much did you start with? Against the Smilkovich jam. For 15 bigs, ace three of clubs, if you remember late last night. Yeah, just was like, you know, chip EV wise, I'm going for it. Does the fan. Behind. Winfred playing 20 big ones behind now. Terrible board. Ace Jack. BVB. That's that's the type of board that smashes the big blind call. Does have two overs, Jack of Hearts, but doesn't really want to get a lot of resistance. Gonna just throw two hundred K out there. See what happens. Maybe multi barrel. Talal has the ace of hearts. But not much of a connection, but he's gonna continue. You don't want to mess with Talal. Talal, did you? Did you just raise ace five offsuit on ten nine six? It's just a sicko. He knows exactly how things stand in terms of ICM board texture that he can really lean into. That ace of hearts as well does give him some potential turn follow throughs and Talal off to an amazing start here. 
at this final table. We were talking of some potential concerns with Mateos and Fader on his left, Thanks. but so far hasn't seemed to affect our chip leader. In fact, if anything, he's managed to separate himself at the top from Mateos. Yeah, I don't think Mateos and Fader Holtz is going to mess with Talal right now. That Talal is willing to put chips in there. Just let him do his thing. Hopefully he eliminates more people for you. You can just ladder up. If not, take your opportunities. He's jack suited. King Jack out. Matrangelo. Chat, who are you rooting for? Let us know. A lot of Mateos fans in the chat, a lot of Fedor fans. Uh, in Vegas, rooting for Petrangelo, obviously. I'll tell you, there's a lot of people on the rail probably rooting on Winfred Yu. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, you heard the cheers when Ali was doing the final table introductions, right? Mm -hmm. Nine seven suited in the cutoff for Winfred. Suited and connected. Stack size not ideal with not these really three. Alive. Big stacks really behind him. He's not phased. He's going to raise it up still. On TV? No. <laughs> He's jacked now for Talal. And Talal has been picking on Win Winfred. Is it like a superstition thing or anything like this? Or just I don't really uh, think he's going to stop. The not caring thing. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's going to be. Whatever, you know. Free raising chips. You really don't have to three bet too big. No, you don't. Note the sizing, less than two and a half X. Fedor sitting on ace 10. Thinking about getting involved, but really, it's not worth it. Sure, maybe Talal is messing around, but do you really want to risk like another million chips to find out? Well, is this one of these spots, Randy, where, so you're phrasing there, is something that kind of bring, brings us to the front yeah. of my mind where Fedor, with a potential cold four bet spot, but what you said, maybe Talal is messing around a little bit, but we just have to let him do his thing for the time being due to the fact that these guys are under immense ICM pressure. Yeah, and it's the risk reward ratio, right? Like the gain is you gain some chips. On the flip side, you know, those 10 big blinds are so meaningful to Fedor's stack. He goes from 40 down to 30 big blinds. Blinds go up. He'll be sitting on 20 something, which is a rejam stack, and could easily be out rather oh, quickly. Perfect timing for you to say that because blinds have gone up to 50,000, 125,000 chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. And yeah, note Fedor in the middle of the count with 34 bigs. Change very quickly. Even Winfred Yu. Bottom of the counts like the, with 12 big blinds. Big blinds getting bigger and small blinds getting smaller uh, and to, to the normal level. Right, right, I get you. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Nick, you started with 2 million? Yeah, two, it was like 2.2 .2 before I posted. Small thing, but. The small blind is smaller than normal, so limping not as good as the price. 350. Fedor bumps it up, put some pressure on Petrangelo. 7-5 suited, very playable. Lots of ICM pressure. It's in position. Yeah, playable and defendable, two very different things here, right, Randy? Exactly. 
it's going to still defend. And try to play cautious. 1.7 million back. Brick. Yeah, both players coming up dry on the 8 3 deuce. Fedor with the range advantage from the small and the betting leads. A 2 5 out there. Betting lead's pretty important here. Even if Petrangelo suspects that Fedor is up to no good a lot, it's hard for him to respond with that stack size. And we continue met with the snap fold from Nikki P. Fedor. Chipping up nicely. You surprised at all, Randy? I mean, about record breaking. Given given the records that we broke at the start of the series, three mm -hmm. events in a row, back to back to back. Mm -hmm. A little, little less. Would have, would have been have yeah. count. <laughs> we're gonna, I'm gonna fix. Pretty disappointed to be honest yeah. with you if we hadn't broken the main event record. Yeah, the numbers are obviously fantastic here in Vietnam. Just gonna get bigger come Cyprus and London. So, and and this one also a location where a lot of players were speculating, oh, you know, it's too far for the Americans, it's too far for the players out west. But they've all made their way here. Yeah. Seth Davies, Jason, they, Timothy Adams, They weren't going to miss out. You know, these guys are here. Some of them with their families, some just here on the, their own. Another pickup for Fedor Holtz. Every major final table, that man right there just seems to be on it. Shout out to our PokerStake.com family. For those of you if you'd invested $100 in Daniel Smilkovich, or I've seen Michael Soizer selling over on PokerStake.com for multiple events. So he's got some of you guys in the chat rooting for him due to his main event action being listed on pokerstake.com. Currently eight players left. He's locked up 418,400 so far for his efforts. Winfred here, ace 10. Oh. That's been chipping down. He's gonna make a stance. Try to pick up some blinds and antis. Fedor Holtz has pocket kings. Go time. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. I got 1.6. Winfred Yu looking for title number three. Fedor looking for title number three as well and in great shape against the ace 10 of Winfred Yu. We're just talking about how Fedor seems to show up for these big ones. So consistent. Flashback to the 200k coin river invitational. As expected here of two kings. Soiza. Into smaller ace king suited. We got a three way coming in, don't we? I don't think I've ever seen a setup as, say, as insane as this at a final table of oh, this yeah. size. As Michael does come yeah, over sure. the top, and Fedor sure looking to hold with the Kings to yeah, become not only the chip leader, but to eliminate both Winfred Yu and Michael Soizer. Soizer does have Winfred covered, so should Fedor hold, he would go home with seventh place money. Sorry, How about this, Randy? Yes, six hundred. Oh, okay. Yeah, two aces left. <laughs> Three hundred and thirty-eight thousand difference between eighth and sixth. Ace on a flop. No way. 
one of two aces finding its way to the ace five deuce. Nobody with a club in hand. Winfred drawing to three outs, Fadel drawing to one out as the jack of clubs <laughs> changes nothing on the turn. Nine of Diamonds is going to confirm the elimination of Winfred Yu. But more importantly, it's going to confirm the hold for Michael Soiser up to 6.1 million now. Fedor, nothing you can do with the two kings. Getting hit in against. <coughs> ace king and ace ten. We do no, 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 lose no, no. Winfred. You, of course, our two-time Triton champion. One of the OGs of the Triton series has been to every single series, adding an additional four hundred eighteen thousand four hundred to his already impressive Triton track record. Winfred, you. Bowing out in eighth, and how about that? Michael Soizer up to 48 big lies now. Fedor down to 23. Nick Petrangelo, the shortest stack with just 13 bigs, and everyone now guaranteed over half a million. 566,800. A three way all in, Randy. Something the Fedor. bookies maybe not. <laughs> Fedor right now is. He's he's annoyed, right? Because if he had had he win that pot, he'd be tournament chip leader right now. He'd have more chips than Talosha Kirchi. Yeah, with it's, six left, would have would have been down to six. It just seems like he's unable to kind of get these big confrontations to go his way deep in these trying events. Yes, he is still in the tournament. He still has twenty three big blinds, but that was that was a lot. Because not only if he wins that pot, he becomes chip leader. He also knocks out Michael Soiza and gets. Another pay jump for everyone. Yeah, now he's got someone on his left with more chips than him as well. Petrangelo, shortest stack. Fireworks. Ace King. Seems like a mandatory all in call incoming. 1.5. Nick think Petrangelo going to leave a little bit back, but is willing to commit all the chips. Fold around. We're two to law, and I don't think to law is going anywhere with two tens. Right. Snap. Puts Whoa. Petrangelo. Not folding. <laughs> okay. Uh, Petrangelo gets shown the two tens. A fair fight. It's a good hand for a guy that plays eight six suited. Eight six suited. <laughs> little needle. Chest of Talal's four bet pot. <laughs> And yeah, we'll let it go, so would really, it? I mean, to, to be perfectly honest, I did think you would have some of these hands in your range, but I can't, yeah, I can't know exactly what you have. So. You have to have some of those middle cards in your range. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the post-mortem going on between Soizo and Talao as the ace-high flop rolls off, giving <coughs> Petrangelo two pair and 91% of the equity with two cards to come. Four diamonds on the turn, changes nothing. Talao looking for a 10. And a 10 only. Otherwise, Nick Petrangelo is going to move up to fifth in chips. Okay. Does find the hold on the 4 3 yeah, run out. And and a half. this really shifts things at this final six. table, Randy. We could have been down to six with Fedor being the overwhelming chip leader. Now we're seven handed with Talao and Adrian tied at the top with Michael Soizer, I should add. Smilkovic comfortably in the middle of the pack with 40 big blinds. And Petrangelo, Holtz, and Adams tied down at the bottom with 26 ish big blinds. Yeah, we got the same tournament chip leader, Talal, but the short stack now, Fedor Holtz. After losing those two kings, 23 big blinds, a lot to work with. Like you said, we could have had multiple eliminations just now. Game's on. It really is. Unbelievable start to this FT. We knew there was going to be fireworks. Didn't expect to have multiple all-ins 
inside the first level and a half. And don't forget Soizo, he got those aces cracked against two jacks. Against Stevie. Now he's got some run good in this tournament. He has indeed, dude. He's the first to admit. Smirkovic, he's been quiet this final table. Hasn't beat Pip yet. 2 9's gonna start. A limp. And you're gonna see passive play with even with hands as strong as two nines when you're in the middle of the pack. You don't wanna you wanna avoid <coughs> big confrontations when you can. Three clubs, monotone, one over. Even here, a hand where you might want to protect your hand is going to turn into a check at these final tables. Great turn card for Daniel Smerkovic. Perhaps he might value bet now. Yeah, not surprised to no? see that Smirkovic hasn't been too involved with the presence of Talao and Mateus on his direct left. One of the worst seat draws he could have asked for coming in three of nine today as he checks on over to Talao who with the extended invitation yeah nice spot for him he's contained the pot and he's induced bets from the chip leader playing it perfectly as safe as it gets as good as it gets really right with a 10 maybe Talal value bet, value owns himself with a 6x 5x Maybe he stabs, and he's going to stab here. Talal is trying to just fold out one club type hands. Right. It's a sizable double barrel from Talal. This one should get picked off pretty quick. I don't think Smirkovic has much value in raising. Can eliminate it's not all folding. of the over pairs. Yeah, he's definitely not folding. I guess he's thinking about is there value in raising? One million. Yeah. Wow. It's really nice to see him find it. One point seven five. One million seven hundred fifty k. And that's a good point you just made. Is that he's not worried about bigger pairs because he went check through pre flop. Right. So he's only worried about ten, but ten that didn't bet the flop. Unlikely. Nicely done, Daniel Smerkovic. Never really afraid. Always willing to splash. We saw that yesterday at our feature table multiple times. And with that pot, Talal Shikurchi down to third place. Yeah, dethroned at this final table. Yeah, it's neck to neck for the chip lead right now. It's the same down at the bottom, you know, Fader on 23, Timothy Adams sat with 26 bigs, Nicky P, Petrangelo with 29 bigs. Talking of Nicky P, the real Nicky P. The real Nicky P, two jacks. Good hand. Oh my two god, aces. what is going on in this? This entire series, Randy, every final table, just when you think the dust has settled and we're Going to be seven handed for a while. What if history repeats itself? I mean, don't you dare. <laughs> Soiza got an aces versus jacks and lost in the 70k final table out in ninth. The same thing could happen. Oh, Soiza here sat two of seven. Petrangelo, 29 bigs facing. Does Petrangelo have another play besides all in? Can he sometimes call a three bet here? I mean, there's no clear short stack that he can wait for. He's looking around. He sees that everyone's pretty safe and comfy. Maybe he just piles it in, expecting a lot of folds. Jax is often very good here. I wouldn't blame him. Neither would I. Seven remain. Knows that Soiza. Second in chips is going to have three bet folds. He's going to be leaning into Petrangelo's on. mid link stack and wow. Snap. Oh boy. <laughs> Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. This is a chip lead pot between Michael Soiser and Nick Petrangelo. 
7.5 million out there. Nicky P. It's coming back over the top for 29 big blinds with the Jacks. Soiser involved in that three-way all-in just less than an orbit ago. Now two cards away from being the overwhelming chip leader and more importantly, eliminating a very tough opponent. One of America's finest, Nick Petrangelo, looking for a jack and a jack only. <laughs> Biggest river card of both of their careers. Yeah. Ten of clubs seals Petrangelo's fate and <coughs> can you believe Randy? Deja vu. Aces against Jack. We are down to the final six, but more importantly, lose this we've lost oh. one of the game's greatest, Nick Petrangelo, out in seventh, getting that monkey off of his back here at the Triton Super High Roller Series in Vietnam in the form of four caches. Has to be thrilled with this run here, although maybe a bitter taste. As he heads home with 566,000 100 for his efforts, and I know, I know we're going to be seeing Petrangelo guaranteed in Cyprus, but that is how things stand. Less than a level into the day. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker 50,000, 125,000. We've gone from nine to six in the blink of an eye. Everyone guaranteed 756,000 for their efforts. And it's just unbelievable scenes here. It really is because, you know, they were sitting on a, what, almost 40 big blind average just now. You don't really get it in, especially with people who are reasonably deep, right? Like, they understand ICM. They're not going to get it in unless they've got some premium holdings, and that's what happened. Jackson to Aces. Well, that storyline that we were discussing <laughs> during the pregame show... <laughs> Michael Soiser, with one title already to his name, career best score of 1.42 million. A win here would move him up to third on the all-time money list of Malaysia, second only to our founders, Paul and Richard. That in itself, something to strive for. Obviously, the 3 million 250 that comes along <laughs> with it. I think that's pretty good up top. But, you know, it means a lot to him for sure. Um, Soiza is very well respected in the Malaysian community as the, one of the best poker players. Puts in a lot of homework, doesn't let his ego get into the game, loves it. Co-founder of the APT, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, and you know, he's just very friendly, good on his head. It, it's, it's nice to see. Bounce this action real quick. Mateos has open raise from the small blind into the big blind and see that. Fedor Holtz calling wheel cards. It's a pair of fours. He will make the call here. His hand not defined yet. Mateos. Does he maybe lean in some more? It's it's tough because it's easy for Fedor to have an ace X here. But some of those ace Xs with just three bet jam pre flop. Does put his foot on the break. Yeah, Fedor is expecting to be ahead here a good amount. His hand is vulnerable, but does he really want to put in more chips in case he's wrong? We'll find out. I know Mateos can get sticky at times with if he's got a pair. Check through. Two pair for Fader or Holtz. Well, he's paying off no matter what bet sizing comes now. For Mateos. Does he think he can move his opponent off of a pair that isn't an ace? Does not, so he's going to check. Yeah, Fedor. Disguised. Yeah, going to go for some value here, one would assume. Yeah, just is he going to target an ace x that 
played passively on a turn river, or is he maybe going to get value from Jack X that turn? Depending on what he thinks, sizing will come. Big it is. It's a sizable bet. Million fifty announced. Mateos with just King High. And in the tank with King High, by the way. Yeah, you know, he is allotted some time due to the shot clock. King 8. No heart draws. No hearts in his hand, I mean. So he doesn't block the hearts he's trying to pick off. 8, not ideal as there could be some gut shots that call it the flop. Lays it down. Expected. One for Team Fedor, number one on Germany's all-time money list, two titles. He's looking to join the very exclusive club of three-time champions, Phil Ivey and Wai Kin Yong, in that club. Mateos looking for his first title, Talao looking for his first title, as is Smilkovic. Soiza, Adams, and Fedor already know how it feels to win a Triton Super High Roller Series event. Look at Talal, Queen 7 offsuit in the cutoff. That's aggressive. Not standard by any means. Fedor Holtz, King 10 suited. Just under 30 big blinds. knows Talal has been active a bit lately. I'll try to take a flop here out of position. We'll invite the chip leader, Michael Soiza, Jack-10 offsuit. Hey, are you surprised by this open? Like Talal? Yeah, I would say so. He's still playing it like he's got the chip lead. Oh. You know, of course, Talal has got some unconventional plays in his playbook. But what makes him unpredictable definitely can be to his advantage. to the flop with some hands that you wouldn't expect, maybe. Flop the pair. Inside straight for draw for Fedor. Middle pair. So is a betting lead for Talal. Let's I don't see know about you, Randy, but I'm a big fan of this Talal Shukurchi guy. Yeah, just because he's raising Queen 7? You know, just he's just just oh, yeah. firing as, as away. You predicted, you know, raid a lot. He's raising a lot. He's sea betting. 275k. Fedor getting the right price to continue here of King 10 suited. Could hit a Broadway. Could hit some backdoor spades. Maybe a pair that might be good. The price is quite cheap. Soisa lays down the best hand, Jack-10, in the muck. Well, with that, Talal has moved up to 61% equity. 80 on this four of clubs turn is a byproduct of the Fedor flat. Soisa getting out of the way from the big, 1.5 million in the middle. Talal is trying to wait half, and he's up against a sex and the middling stuff. He's going to check. 10 is good for Fedor Holtz. And that with some showdown value. Beat like Queen 10, King 10. I'm sorry, same hand. He beats Queen 10. Random air. A check through and Fedor are going to chip up. Talal falls below. Fedor chips. Fedor holds his chips. Has he really? I think so. Unless I counted it wrong. No, Talal was second in chips at the start of the hand. Hold on. Let me see. It must have been me reading it wrong then. Yeah, so Talal moves down to 5.4 million. Fedor holds up to 4.7. Closes the gap. Five big blind difference. Talal currently in third. Fedor in fifth. To clarify. 
Timothy Adams, short stack now, 26 big blinds. Just hanging in there. What an unbelievable start to this Triton Super High Roller Series main, record breaking main, biggest 100k in the history of the game. Those of you tuning in over on YouTube and Twitch, let us know, as always, where you're tuning in from, who you're rooting for, and more importantly, drop us a like if you're watching over on YouTube. See 7,000 of you currently joining us on the Triton Poker YouTube channel. It's free to click like, helps us grow the channel, helps us grow the game, and more importantly, helps us bring this free high stakes poker content to a wider audience. Who wouldn't want this game that we all love to continue to grow and go from strength to strength? We announced two more stops yesterday, I believe. Those dates were announced, so plenty more poker content from this series to come, as well as between now and Cyprus. Do appreciate each and every one of you for clicking that like button and being a supporter of what Triton is trying to build. Yeah, BBB here. Soiza raises just north of 3x. Gets called by Timothy Adams. King 7 offsuit. Gonna go ahead and come in with a C bet. Hoping that Timothy Adams can't continue. It is a pretty dry board. Timothy Adams, King 7. King of Diamonds important, in case he wants to float, he's got some backup. King high, good, sometimes. But it's awkward, because it's not too many good turn cards for you. Just depends on how light he thinks Soiza is taking a stab here. Timothy Adams making a call here, King 7 high. We got a hand brewing up here, Jack on the turn. Not a good card to multi-barrel for Soiza. He could easily be up against Jack X. You could hear a pin drop out there. Randy down to six here. 100k made 756,000 guaranteed for these final six players. Timothy Adams, King High. Certainly good, a decent amount. Perhaps he thinks that Soiza is just going to check fold a large part of his range. Going to reach for a time card. Deciding whether to bet or not. He can just put up any amount of chips. Well, if he comes in with a bet, he's going to come in with a smaller size, I imagine. Paired board. Don't need to go too big. Five twenty-five. It's over. Nice pickup for Timothy Adams, not letting go of that flop. Timothy Adams looking for his second main event title. Best career cash of 3.6 million. One of only three players at this table whose best career cash won't be beat <coughs> with a win here, should Adams come out on top. Guaranteed to move to number two on the Canadian all-time money list, regardless of where he finishes here today, overtaking <coughs> Sam Greenwood. Second only to Daniel Negreanu. And Daniel will be a hard one to pass up. Yeah, Daniel recently crossing the 50 million in total live. Do you think we'll see Phoenix in London maybe? We, we say that all the time. but we, This is just all bombarding with tweets. All the fans in the chat just get like 5,000 tweets going out. I'm like, can oh, you okay. just please wow, you're really go? really riling everyone up. <laughs> I want to state for the record, Daniel, that those words came out of Randy's mouth, not mine. He's always kind of iterated that he wants to kind of come out to one. So I think we'll get there eventually. London would make a lot of sense. I think so. Direct flights from Vegas. It's an easier flight. It's not the worst jet lag to deal with. It's, you know, it's manageable. You can 
you can play it smartly, and I know he's when he's come to uh, three to nine Kings nine. before three, three nine, yeah. in Rosaldov. We've spoken about how he manages his jet lag when he does travel from Vegas four, to Europe. Four, seven. I think we might. We'll get him. We'll get him. You're, you're, you're saying that with 100 percent certainty, so that's on you, Less. Henry. No. We will get him. Yeah. Nothing's 100 percent in this life, Randy. Getting an aces, that's 100 percent. Getting it in <clears throat> with aces. Okay, never mind. Let's move on, Henry. Go on, do tell. No, I'm not going to tell because I misspoke. Smerkovic in the small blind. Three do suited. Not too shabby. Not too great. Although the small blind is smaller than normal. Less than half. The big blind. He's actually reaching for raising chips. Trying to attack Talal. That's yes, a big statement. Has overtaken Shakurchi. Talal is not going to get shaken off Queen 10 offsuit. Milkovic with the pre-flop aggression, bottom pair and a gut shot. Oh, wow, just queen high. It's all about bottom pair being a good flop for three do suited. It really is. There's not. It can't get too much better. Talal just has queen high. Does he think that Smirkovic is out of line to make a call here? He does. This pot is going to be interesting. Shikurchi doesn't mind floating and getting creative on later streets as board pairs on the ace of hearts turn. And maybe Talal, no need to get creative if he thinks queen high is good and has enough showdown. I think queen high has a good amount of showdown. He might not expect, like, king high is always about the flop, too. See how he wants to take this one. He most certainly doesn't think a pair would ever fold on a turn. Take one off. Hits the 10 and Daniel Smerkovic in trouble. Yeah. There's a bit of fluff Thinking on about some block yeah. bet. Yeah, he's reaching for yeah, as little like chips as you can think of. Almost a min bet. Now, Smilkovic obviously more than capable of bet three betting in this spot. 100%. Does that deter Shikachi for? Going for value. No, just going to call with the queen 10. Showing the three dues and scoops an important 1.67 million chip pot. I mean, had he just folded flop, would have dropped down to tied fifth with Fedor on 38 bigs. Now trades places with Daniel, moves back up to second in chips. That is the Triton. Super High Roller Series main event trophy with the custom Jacob and Co. main event timepiece. That is how things stand at this final table. Michael Soizer leading the field. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Steak and talking of PokerStake.com. Randy, our chip leader, sold his action or sold some of his action into this main over on PokerStake.com. I know. There are viewers in the chat with a bit of... Sweating some soyza. Yeah, you know. Potential 32x return. They're, saying, they're probably saying hello right now. Do but. let us know if you got a piece of that soyza action. Yeah, and follow soyza. I think he's been selling a little bit of pieces to 
give the fans some some sweats. If you miss this one, get him in the short deck streets. He plays that event as well. King Jack for the chip leader in the high jack. A little raise and take. Let's go. <coughs> scared. A little bit scared. Yeah. A little bit scared. Six suited for Fedor Holtz in the big blind. So 125 in the middle as these two fight it out. Ace high board, three hearts, Timothy Adams inside straight draw. Flush draws. Definitely a spot he can consider putting in the bet. See how this one plays out as these two bottom of the chip counts square off. You see Timothy Adams putting the small bet to start things off. Fedor. Top pair. A6 tends to check call a lot on this flop. Just north of 1 million now in the middle, going into a turn card. Queen hits it for Timothy Adams. Broadway, feeling good. 100% lock on the hand has Fedor drawing dead. Yeah, very fortunate turn card. Let's see what Timothy Adams comes in with. Still a lot of hands he can get value from. The ace X is the Broadway with the heart draw, Broadway with a straight draw. Six twenty five. Is a single raise pot, so it does make sense to kind of size more two thirds, hitting those hands that would just call pre flop. You know, the Broadways. It's not a nice spot for Fedor, he doesn't have a heart as a backup. He's going to lay down correctly. Nicely done, phase six suited on the turn. turn. Five seconds, yeah. A rough start to this final table for Fedor. Obviously had the two-way all-in. His pocket kings couldn't hold against the ace-king. Diamonds of Michael Soizer with Purdue also involved in that three-way all-in with ace-10. Soizer finding the two-outer on the flop. Three stacks are white, Fido. Yeah. Three point nine. Walk for the chip leader. He's going to take it. I'm just playing around over on Poker Stake, looking at some of the action and how it's so easy. Did you find Soiza? I didn't. No, it's too late. Ah. But I did find a 
certain Michael Zhang, who's going to be coming today, I believe. From oh, is he? He's my neighbor, yeah. We literally live like oh. two minutes away from each other. Oh, you guys are buddies. In Rawai, selling into the short deck main. A couple of bullets at 100k buy-in, of course. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't come out for the No Limit. Very well versed in No Limit yeah. Hold'em. I'm not too sure what the reasons for that were, actually. I, I asked the same question. He was just like, shut up, Henry. I'll be there for the short deck. I'll be there when I want to be. Yeah. Back to the action. It's my terms, right? Not your terms. <coughs> Suited queen for both players. Timothy Adams on the short end. Would be closing the action. Timothy Adams a real grinder. Good work ethic. Time bank or what? One by mistake. <laughs> Daniel Smirkovic has so many time banks. Count. Yeah. And the other one, after we are really tough as well, right? That was against Sonata, like the Asian side. Ah, was, mm. was tough as well, yeah. Just use one, <laughs> one, one time bank and call all in, you know. Just one. one time. Yeah. <laughs> Boss man. <laughs> I was like, did I, did I not get one or you know, just Biggest 100k and you're just out there bossing every move without using up any yeah. time banks. Yeah, he plays confident. Snapped him off. <laughs> Watch him just play like a 10 minute hand <laughs> later. Nicer for the <laughs> oh, this one. Potential to be a 10 minute hand. <laughs> so we head to the turn as Timothy has got himself in pretty rough shape. On the queen six five after flopping top pair, and he's a very aggressive. To Lao Shikurchi, who has him out kicked. Adam's looking for a four or a seven. Yeah, Tom knows there's a lot of value to be had against these pair of straight draws, like six seven, seven eight. Kicker is decent. Start with a turn bet. And I really just don't see how Adams can get away against a guy who's been firing away. Yeah, I don't either. You know, there's backdoor flush draws coming in. More straight draws coming in. He's got backup in case he's wrong. Well, let's see if he can somehow find a way out. It'd be very hard to do so. Queen four. Already knows what it takes to win a main event. He's going to need to pull something out of the bag on the river, whether it be a four or seven or a hero fold, depending on the run out. It's the king of spades, and that feels like. That's a great card for him because I think Talal might shut down. Yeah, quick check. Nice pop for Talal. Moving back up. Separating Antara himself now. Yeah. Second in chips, closing the gap between himself and well, Soiza. <laughs> 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 I guess I could, um, so I could tank for 11. Yeah, he's like, he's the real <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah. He's the real boss. Yeah. 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 He's been setting up the best slow roll in the history of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. <laughs> the good one. Don't show it to me, Hedge fund manager. I think Adrian is a good target for. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> slow on Adrian. He's way too nice. He's <laughs> actually widely regarded as the best non-pro in the history of the game. Has won pretty much everything there is to win online. Career best cash of 1.18 million. 174,000 in Triton earnings, five caches. Did not expect to get six handed this quickly, Randy. Nope. Ace nine. I'm going to try to put a little limp here. Maybe sometimes you mix in a limp jam. Check through. There's a nine. Smarkovich, no piece. 
Timothy Adams has been puck controlling a bit throughout this final table. No surprise, he starts here with a check. Not looking to slow down. And here's the call. I'm sorry. Here's the bet from Smerkovic. Mini bet. Yeah, one's check too. That Queen of Clubs, you know, some interaction. There's some turn cards that he can pick up equity on. And also nice to just stab here and get the fold from Adams. Yeah, well, Adam's not going away. Gonna make the call. Trip nines now. Let's see if Adam quickly checks. Sometimes you would take the betting lead. Smerkovich. Nothing. Gotta be worried that Adam's got a piece. out there does check behind as the three of hearts rolls off on the river and now potentially some value to be had for Timothy Adams all the straight draws on the flop breaking although that queen of clubs blocking some of those busted draws that Adams would potentially turn into a bluff yeah very good point well said Timothy Adams well he's got to go for value he could up be up against a 10x. He could be up against 5x. 800? 800k. That is an overbet. Targeting any kind of pair. Trying to make his hand look like a bluff. Going really polar. This blind v blind battle. Milkovich paying him off. Timothy Adams moving up to fourth in chips. Smilkovich just unable to get away from it. Knows that Adams is capable of having bluffs there. How about it? How are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? See the numbers creeping up on YouTube and Twitch, understandably so. Record breaking 100k right here on our screens, brought to you live from the Hoi Anna Golf Resort and Casino in Vietnam. Henry Kilbane alongside Randy Liu in the booth. Arlene Najard will be stepping in as Randy launches my sunglasses across the room for no apparent reason. Yeah. Sorry about that. No worries, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what to say. Just grabbed my glasses and yeeted them. All right, so Soiza here, preflop razor. Chip leader, opening to second in chips in the big. Wow, flopping best. But got to proceed with caution, one would assume. Some check raises available. Maybe not the hand to do it with, as he does. I never want to discount check, check raises for Talal, right? Talal is just willing to kind of figure out where he's at, put some pressure on. Very unpredictable. Does have a pretty good hand here on turn. Check through. Oh, sorry. Check on the flop. Sorry again. Check on the turn for Talal. We got there, Randy. <laughs> Team effort. Just me, really. Yeah, an ace high, ace 10. A lot of hand here for Soiza. Maybe he wants to set the price. The small bet on the turn. To fold out some of the gut shots and draws. Opts to check back with his showdown for Diamonds completing the front door flush on the river. And a little block from Shikurchi gets it done. Let's 
six players remain. Did not expect to get to this stage of the tournament. As it looks like, Randy, we are heading into our first break of this final table. The chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. That is how things stand here in Vietnam. Michael Soizer leading the way with 58 big blinds down the bottom of the chip counts, but not down and out. Fedor Holtz with 26 bigs, tied with fellow countryman Daniel Smilkovic, also 26 bigs as we welcome you back to the break desk here at the Hoi An Golf Resort and Casino in Hoi An, Vietnam. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. Randy, we started with nine. We're down to the final six. Yeah, um, you know, we expected Roman to kind of get in there and maybe bust out pretty quickly with five big blinds. Other two, not so much. Petrangelo running his two jacks into two aces of Soiza. But Soiza, like, what? He, he got in two aces against two jacks. Fortune from him in this tournament. But he also got in two kings against Fedor Holtz's. Sorry, he got an ace king against Fedor Holtz's two kings. Right. And Winfred used ace 10 and happened to hit one of the two outs remaining. Really good spot for Soiza. You know, he's putting his chips to work and sitting comfy at the top. Well, there's a lot more than money at stake here. Some of the guys out there still battling, looking to join the three-time champion club. Others looking to move up to third on their all-time money list for their countries. Um, obviously, Michael Soiza, one of the biggest conversations of this as he is the chip leader coming into the final six. We're going on a short break. We don't go too far. Everyone guaranteed 756000 for their efforts. We're still playing for 3250000 as we head into our first break of this final table. We'll see you guys shortly. GG Poker, the biggest poker site. Best poker site. Poker. Wow. The most so ambitious. This is a crazy. It's a doom. Knowing where to start when learning to play poker can be incredibly confusing. Well, we have the solution for you. Our free five day course will teach you everything you need to know in five days to start making your first winnings at micro to mid stakes. No excuses for free. Check it out.
It's okay. I know that you know that I know that you know that I know that you know. Ah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're about three levels ahead of me. I so. know. <laughs> Evidently not. I would have called me kings if I was. <laughs> Go time, Henry. Pocket threes, just under three big blinds. Maybe you pushing us in. I would feel that the blinds would just get out of the way. Mateos can get a heads up with Mateos with an overlay from the big blind, the big blind ante, and the small blind. One, one three gone. Yeah, one of Roman's <laughs> threes in Fedor's hand. I mean, he's been incredibly patient, or as patient as one can be, coming into this final table. Good luck, sir. Thank you. It's allowed, just saying good luck, sir. Good luck, gentlemen. Key flip here. Kind of unsure who Talal's rooting for because, see, the presence of Roman allows him to just dictate the pace of play at this final table. 95,000 ladder between ninth and eighth as we head to the 9 8 deuce. Flop so far, so good. For the Czech Republic fans out there. Mateus with two overs, running diamonds. And the that Queen of Diamonds rolling off. <laughs> giving Mateus 39% equity going to the river. King, Jack, 10, diamond needed to eliminate Roman. There is the jack of clubs. There's Mateos Rivers, the king high straight, and we lose our first player of the final table. Just seeing Roman shaking hands with Alex Kulev there on the rail. Time to gamble. The yes, we know. Biggest online crushers out here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. Roman Kravitz, first ever series for him, I'm sure. Now that he's got the taste of how a Triton poker superstake.com, currently eight players left. He's locked up 418,400 so far for his efforts. Winfred here, ace 10. Oh. That's been chipping down. He's going to make a stance. Try to pick up some blinds and antes. Fedor Holtz has pocket kings. Go time. Oh boy. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. I got 1.6. Winfred Yu looking for title number three. Fedor looking for title number three as well and in great shape against the ace 10 of Winfred Yu. We're just talking about how Fedor seems to show up for these big ones. So consistent. Flashback to the 200k coin river invitational. As expected here of two kings. Soiza. In the smaller ace king suited. We got a three way coming in, don't we? I don't think I've ever seen a setup as, say, as insane as this at a final table of oh, this yeah. size. As Michael does come yeah, over the top and Fedor looking to hold with the Kings to become not only the chip leader, but to eliminate both Winfred Yu and Michael Soizer. Soizer does have Winfred covered. So should Fedor hold, he would go home with seventh place money. How about this, Randy? Yes, six hundred. Oh, okay. <laughs> Two aces left. Three hundred and thirty-eight thousand difference between eighth and sixth. Ace on a flop. No way. One of two aces finding its way to the ace five deuce. Nobody with a club in hand. Winfred drawing to three outs. Fadal drawing to one out. As the jack of clubs <laughs> changes nothing on the turn. Ooh. 
Line of Diamonds is going to confirm the elimination of Winfred Yu. But more importantly, it's going to confirm the hold for Michael Soiza up to 6.1 million now. Fedor, nothing you can do with the two kings. Getting it in against. <coughs> ace king and ace ten. We do oh, no, lose Winfred Yu, of course, our two time Triton champion. One of the OGs of the Triton series has been to every single series, adding an additional 418,000. Down at the bottom, you know, Fader on 23, Timothy Adams sat with 26 bigs, Nikki P, Petrangelo, 29 bigs. Talking of Nikki P, the real Nikki P. Real Nikki P. Two jacks. Good hand. Oh my Two what, aces. What is going on in this this entire series, Randy? Every final table. Just when you think the dust has settled and we're gonna be seven handed for a while. What if history repeats itself? I mean, don't you dare. <laughs> Soiza got an aces versus jacks and lost in the 70k final table out in ninth. The same thing could happen. Oh, Soiza here sat two of seven. Petrangelo, 29 bigs facing. Does Petrangelo have another <coughs> play besides all in? Can he sometimes call? And a warm welcome back to continuing coverage of event number nine of this 2023 edition of the Triton Super High Roller Series from Hoi An, Vietnam, specifically the Hoi An Resort Golf and Casino Alina Jad. Back in for Henry Kilbane, Randy Liu. And uh, Randy, this has been a spicy little final, final table thus far. A third of the field already dispensed with as we have just six remaining. Roman Hrabic, first to go, somewhat predictably, I would say, off of that very short stack of 525. Then Winfred Yu, Nick Petrangelo, seventh. But we do still have one first-timer to Triton out in this field. That is one Daniel Smirkovich. Yeah, Daniel Smirkovich has always been the one to drive action in, you know, yesterday and today. He's making plays. He's currently sitting with 26 big blinds, so definitely a lot of room to play for for a short stack. When you look at those stacks, by the way, Randy, it's sort of the tale of two classes in this society. Mm -hmm. yes. You've got Soiza and Shakurchi up at the top, then the big gap down to Mateos, Adams, Smilkovich, and Holtz all clustered up at 34 and 26. And as I click the payouts here, you note that there is a lot of ICM. You've got 756,000 awaiting the sixth place finisher, then big jumps up to fifth, and then fourth, of course, the first of four seven-figure paydays. So are you expecting these bottom four stacks to really tread lightly and be cautious or kind of continue to do as uh, they will? 100% they're going to tread lightly. They've been treading lightly throughout this final table so far. Big ICM implications, big pay jumps. They really just need to try to maintain their stack and chip up slowly without getting all their chips at risk when they don't have to at this point. Interesting little tidbit per conversation with players that shall not be named, but in terms of the one man that they felt was going to be the most difficult opponent at this final table, two different players responded. Tim Adams currently sitting in fourth. So we'll keep an eye on the Canadian as he keeps his eye on that big first place prize and we send it down to the feature table once more. So it's 8.6 mil plus, Shakurchi 8.2 plus, and then the drop off as mentioned to the other four stacks. Nobody shallow by any stretch of the imagination though, with the blinds at 75, 150, and that 150K ante, 375K in orbit. The cost of poker as you get a look at the payouts brought to you by GG Poker, title sponsor, the Triton Super High Roller Series. Record-breaking main event, third day. 13.5 million prize pool. Watching the highlights during the break, that hand, Soiza, Jacks, Aces. Memories. Yeah, PTSD. I believe it was Chidwick with the Jacks. It was in Chidwick. The 75K. But he 
was fortunate to get his aces to hold this time in what is a bigger prize pool. Smilkovich, by the way, per conversation with him, confirmed might have a little bit of superstition on the uh, run good red Triton tracksuit. Been rocking it. Doesn't require any superstition to open the button with two fives as Shikurchi rolls things over. Yeah, it reminds me of Teddy KGB. It really does. It's good luck. Teddy KGB always wears it. Always wears it. You might as well, too. KGB got showered at the end of rounders. <laughs> Randy, we don't want to run like D him. Did Daniel maybe only watch most of the movie? <laughs> he turned it off before the end. Doesn't know how it, <laughs> how it played out for old Teddy K. Fives here on the monotone flop as Shikurchi's two overs come up empty. Not exactly a choice sight for Smilkovich either as he checks back now. Four to a flush on board. Awkward. Talal's been pouncing on weakness. He's got the chips to do so. Let's see if he wants to try to lean on Daniel Smirkovich right now. Here's King 10, unlikely to be good. Trying to read the positions. See if he can get some idea of ranges. We'll do a little bit of a tank check. Smirkovich, two fives. I mean, three overs, monotone board, not yeah. good for him. It was interesting because the tone that you used to describe those two fives suggested that they were a lot sexier hand than they were, but clearly the check back prudent from Daniel. Any bets at this point turning those fives into a bluff, one would imagine this. The seven rolls off now. Shikurchi does have the big stack to kind of bully the boys around a bit. This not the one, though. Wow, two fives. He's going to be able to scoop this pot. Just wondering if he should turn these into... A bluff right now. Okay. Going to take it to showdown. Four overs. Four flush. Still good. Passes the button over. Happy to haul one in there. Did make a 16th place run in the very first event of the series. That's GG the same Super one Millions. that he was down to 8K in chips in level one and somehow ran that same bullet. You remember that? I that do. was unbelievable. It's like 90 some odd percent of his chips <laughs> plus and then spun it all the way back up. He looked a little miserable as after those hands, yeah, right? But then sick. somehow did not have to put in another 25K to re-enter. Mm -hmm. But no, I've been actually, I've never witnessed, got to watch Smirkovich play. I've been very impressed with the way he goes about these big buy-in tournaments is just willing to splash around, pounce on the people, trying to ladder up a bit. Ace eight. Talal hasn't been shy of playing pots. Queen Jack on the button. You know, I had a little conversation, again, protecting the anonymity of the players. Yeah, we're gonna figure out who it is, aren't we? About Talal, no, you're not, I promise. <laughs> who flops top pair here on the Jack-7-6 board. And the scouting report was sort of that he's a very sticky player post-flop. You just can't get rid of him. If he flops any little equity, some kind of backdoor thing, he wants to take a peek. And some adjustments, perhaps from time to time, being made by players as a result. And when you arm him with enough chips, too, he becomes much more dangerous in terms of that stickiness. Barrels here. Sends the ace eight into the muck as we weren't interested in a C bet with that kind of kit. Yeah, Tola's not afraid of firing away. He's been showing this showing this throughout this final table and yesterday as well. He's just relentless, really. I mean he got Soyza to fold two kings in a four bet pot with eight six suited on A side board, one bet. He's they've been talking about it. You know, he's been trying to get credibility back, like, hey, I got ace king, let me show everyone and so he's just like, I'm not having any of that. Yeah. Here we have Tim Adams. Game 10 off, inadequate. <coughs> Suited one gapper. Up we go. Look, you don't ship tournaments by laying back chip leader should be raising and he's going to do that just that. Fedor, see? Ace 8 in the muck. 
would imagine the A7 in the big blind is a little bit of a different proposition for Soiza. You get to close the action. He's got chips to play with. Actually, Soiza is the chip leader, but you know, not much of a difference. Oh. On we go. Eight and a quarter in the middle. And a six in the window does leave Shikurchi in front of this ace high, though Soiza's spade is working hard, checks it. Yeah, this hand might not be over, even if Talal fires a C-bet. Soiza could have the best hand against someone who is raising quite frequency, frequently. That's a sizable C-bet. Just north of three big blinds. Let's see how Soiza reacts. Ace of spades, important card. Seven of diamonds could turn into something special. Yeah, maybe got a little straight draw action on the turn. But the size just a little bit too big. You can see he really wanted to, to interact there. <laughs> Did Talal give him a look? <laughs> yeah. At least you had a pad this time, you know. It's because it was 8 6 suited again. I ruled it out when I saw the six of spades on the flop. So. <laughs> They're not going to let Talal get away with that one, are they? There's a black one. Listen. You just play group one holdings. Ah, oh, gotcha. Thanks. Got to tap into the left brain, get a little creative from time to time. And we say this facetiously, but... Pattern recognition is going to be a skill that every one of our top tier pros on tour have. They're paying attention, they're watching back. Oh, okay. I don't know about that, man. To get me back. I don't know about that. Talal settling in. Two That's tenths just choosing to flat the Smokovich yeah. open, Randy. Very, very important. Two wow. aces for Soiza. Number one and number two in the stack of the remaining six in this 100K main. This is kind of a nice setup for Soiza's three bet, too, because the flat from Talal sets the stage for what a lot of people would imagine is a higher frequency three bet squeeze kind of take advantage. Yes. I mean, Soyuz has got the stack that is going to pounce. It looks one like a move. One, the one time someone flat calls in position, there's a squeeze incoming. Mm -hmm. I don't think these two tens are going anywhere. Let's see. A lot of history building between these two. Sure is. Don't forget, he got Soyuz at full two kings yesterday with eight high. Those cards. You mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, maybe so to Shikurchi a little sticky in some spots. Nothing wrong with playing two tens in this spot. Right, but how do you play them? Okay, it's going to be for a call. Talal so will have the benefit of position here. But obviously, the disadvantage of being a four to one dog heading to this flop with tens. Eight high board, going to be a tougher one for Shikurchi to escape, certainly for the time being, with 2.8 in the middle. Does have that 10 of clubs, which is relevant. Yeah, this is a tough spot for Talal. You can overpair Michael Soiza. This is the type of board where you'll see that a lot with your air. He is covered, important to note. Thousand. Gonna eight fire eight hundred. Really does. So it doesn't have much, too much to be worried about besides pocket dates. If it opted to one, one to even call, I don't think he thinks pocket deuces and fours would call a squeeze here. A quick call from Talal. Turn's gonna be important. Another one point six in the middle. Pot swells to four point four. Now Soiza picking up a wheel gut shot. And his texture continues to be an issue in terms of escape routes for Talal, Randy. Yeah, this is a very good card for Soiza in a sense that he's going to have some ace kings and ace queens that want to barrel the turn. Talal might read into that and put in one more call. So very, very bad card for Talal. Two million. 
two million. It's it's not it's a hefty price, but it's it's going to be very hard for Talal to get away. Is it one of those spots where I'm trying to get back at you? Does he give Soyz a credit to barrel to turn here sometimes? Wow, what a lay down two tens! Give it to Talal. Nicely Eight, executed. Six, seven, eight, seven, seven, seven. Wow. You got me if it was. You know, we talk a lot about Talal's a businessman, Talal's a VIP. More like a fold King. like that. Hmm? Aces. Pro. Aces. Yeah. <laughs> That's a period. Pro. Full I stop. Yourself, to be honest. <laughs> Never know what you could have. Give him the board texture too, an eight high board. Little wheel gutter shows up on the turn. There's some frequency with which one might imagine that Soyza is just starting to lean, but maybe just the fact that we have so much ICM. Talal's the other big stack in the room. He just looks at the bigger picture, the macro of it, mm -hmm. and says, nah, Soyza's not out of line here. Yeah, very well said, because, you know, T Talal had more chips than Soyza in that hand. He could have busted him. Does Soiza really want to risk all of his chips in a situation with huge ICM implications? That's the question. Honestly, this he, hand. Back he to was back. really setting himself up, by the way, for something like that. But indeed, Shikurchi from tens to jacks, back to back, confrontations with Soiza, who is a flat caller with ace queen on the button. And Tim Adams, off of that lean 3.8 million chip stack, has an ace queen of his own. Back-to-back -back hands where we've seen someone flat call, someone waking up with the hand that can put in more chips. Adams, 23 big blinds. Just no other play than all in a face queen, especially against the open razor who's been opening very light. Mm -hmm. Two jacks. This is a cooler. Ace queen. Two outs dead. I'm expecting a confrontation here. And so is it getting away. Yeah, of course, if Shakurchi, as one might expect, decides to make this call, Soiza will be heavily incentivized to sit this one out Three, as eight, the clear eight. overall chip leader with north of 10 million. Holy. Yeah, Shakurchi jamming over the top just to make things official. And the loss of an ace or a queen out of Soiza's hands is a bad development for Adams. Over an 8 million chip pot. Yeah, this is a tournament defining moment for Timothy Adams. In rough shape. Two outs gone. Take a flop here. Ace in the window. Jack! Wow! Adams. Thought maybe there was gin on that board, but a seven, then a jack revealed in that order. Shakurchi hits the set and leaves Adams drawing dead on the turn. You can feel the disappointment yeah. and even the sympathy, by the way, on the face of both Adams and in turn Shakurchi. So much respect for one another out here competing at these levels and so much at stake. GG, bro. He did nothing wrong. Timothy Adams played great. Another fine performance for him in the main event because he shipped the main event before at a Triton series in the 100K. Add 756K to that young man's career Triton total, which certainly isn't done being accumulated. He leaves us with five. Shakurchi didn't leave Soiza at the top of the chip counts for long, did he? Back on top. 78 bigs, 11.6 million plus, and a real possibility of a confrontation with the likes of Soiza for the title. Does look like it's shaping up to be that way, doesn't it? They are flying right now, Ali. What do you mean four people already gone? Yeah, none of us would have suspected that we'd be sitting five-handed at this point. In the main, I think we were kind of strapped in for a long haul. Mm -hmm. Did you note the prize guarantee? 965K. 
I mean, round it up to a seven-figure payday. Knocking on that seven-figure. We're not quite there yet, okay? 35K. It's like change for them. <laughs> that's one night at the KTV here. <laughs> Actually, that's probably Many nights. one to two years at the KTV <laughs> here, if I'm being honest. Smilkovich, Jack seven, small blind. Picking on the big dog. Talal, looking over at his chips. He's he's relentless. He truly is. You're telling me he's a businessman. This guy plays so good. Well, listen, Shakurchi is a fixture in the biggest stakes in Vegas. He shows up to town, the big game goes. Talking 5K, 10K mix. That's a big game. Yeah, he can play mixed games. That's for right. sure. He, That's right. I see him battling out for those mixed game titles online all the mm -hmm. time. Take, take some practice up there. Take them to the streets live. I can only imagine what a tough customer Talal is in those cash games, by the way, back in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Just loves the best competition, really. Not afraid. No surprise he's here at Triton. I mean, I just find it amazing that he's once again at the top of accounts in a huge buying event. Most people just dream to be able to get one of these opportunities yeah. right in a lifetime. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, I've shipped it before. I'm just doing it again. It's been a while. Meanwhile, some clubs. From Jack 7 off, limping the small and folding to the raise, to Jack 8 suited, raising the button. Mateos' clubs are smothered. Going to defend, though. Price is right. Mateos hasn't been quiet lately, but collecting pay jumps. Middle pair out in front for Adrian. Checks with Flo. Not much connection for Smerkovic. North of 20 big blinds. Does he want to fire away and use some of these important chips? Let's see. Just a little bit. Two BBs. Won't be able to shake Adrian Mateos' mid pair. Something about the Spaniard always makes me nervous. Like he just. Yeah. yeah he he's, stares you down once in a while. He's kind of a nerve wracking sight when your head's up in a pot. Not a nerve-wracking sight, though. The Ten of Clubs on the turn actually rates to be a very welcome one for Mateos as his check call brought that card, which, of course, has not helped Daniel's cause. Yeah, not a great spot to multi-barrel. Jack-8. Helped it your hand. Knuckle back. Blank. Three good pair. blank. Three pairs, is that good? In uh, Pygal. You ever play Pi Gal? <laughs> I don't think about it. I've never played Pi Gal, but I know. I know the rules. Randy, what? I'm like, I'm like a fake Asian, huh? <sighs> That's natural nine on the right. You see that? Okay. You've uh, earned back your, Got some respect. your culture card there. <laughs> That's a value bet. You did That's overlook a... the natural eight, though, for Smokovich, <laughs> so I don't, I'm not sure what to make of this. But yeah, value bet there from Mateos of. A little north of one million as the jack high gets shot right into the muck. Did you get wind, by the way, of this insane multi-month-long face-up high gal jackpot that was brewing back in Vegas? We're going to talk about it, but first, we're going to give you a peek at how we stay comfortable up here in the booth. It's courtesy of the folks at Secret Lab, our official partners. Game-winning comfort delivered. For the highest of stakes, type exclamation point giveaway. Get yourself in on a shot at a Triton Poker X Secret Lab limited edition chair. Going to be awarded in just a couple of days. Ace Deuce suited now for Soiza. Standard 300K. <coughs> King 10. Straight into the muck from Mateos. Yeah. Quick, quick fold. Look, you're going to see tighter preflop play at final tables. It's just a given standard. Ace four. You know he's actually thinking about three betting this hand right now. 
Ace rag. He's got good blocker. He knows the chip leader's opening a lot. Yeah, nailed it. Nasty. It's just the type of hand where it doesn't really play that well post flop. You have a shorter stack, so your opponent is put in a situation to pretty much forfeit all in or not. You're raising a lot, expected to fold. You unblock the hands that will raise fold, say the 9x, 10x, 8x. Middling stuff. Yeah. Really nice play from Fedor. So is it just concedes? I touched on that. Face up pie gal. Yeah, tell me, please. Jackpot. It really depleted many poker bankrolls. No way. In both Vegas and beyond, because it was a network jackpot across the Caesars properties, and it got up to the highest number it had ever been in history. You have to hit a seven card straight flush. Sorry? Huge jump. You can use a joker. Significant. And all, all of a sudden, the EV got to a place where, you know, a lot of the anal analytical minds EV. of the poker players, where they were going, this is a plus EV bet. Difficult to capture, obviously, but it didn't stop many from pursuing it. And ultimately, hit 6.4 million. Thomas yeah. Zanet, Zano hit it at the Flamingo in Las Vegas. This is January of this year. Was he one of these people that play poker at all? Or was oh, he yeah. just yeah? Oh yeah. Five fifty. Good for him. So he's up playing a little poker. The kind that doesn't take a rocket scientist to play. Ace King. Ace seven suited actually an interesting spot, man. He's expecting Soyza to pounce on his small blind lip. Right. There are times when Fedor just says, Rip it in. It would be a bad time to do that, of course. Just calls. Saves himself. So far. So we'll play for 1.25. Diamond in the window. A seven behind it as Holtz hits the side card for the lead. Forgive for me. For the lead. Oh, okay. For the lead. <laughs> <laughs> for the way to lose some chips. All right. Let's see, so is it here, top pair. I mean, look, for Fedor, when you limp call, you never like to see two overs when you make your pair, but he's up against the guy. It's expected to pounce on him, expected to see that these flops. He's got no other play than to check call here, bottom pair, backdoor, not flush draw, with an ace. An ace is nice too, because say you hit two pairs, your opponent maybe hit it, or they'll just stab away, trying to rep it. So another 600 Go. <coughs> into the middle, and that is a very welcome card for Fedor. Picks up the nut flush draw, checks one more time. Yeah, mandatory continue coming up for Fedor Holtz. For Soiza, easily can get value from Queen X type hands versus Kings. The question is what size to use, as there's 20 big blinds in Fedor's Holtz stack remaining. Maybe along the lines of one million or so. Let's see. Well, he's cut out a million chips. Like one million. Exactly. Fedor. You don't like to see multiple barrels, but you got draw to the absolute nuts. You got a disguise seven you could hit. Check call. Hope it goes check through. Hope you hit. Jamming doesn't really do anything but Get you to put it in chips behind. Don't think he would ever expect King X to fold. Oh, wow. Six of diamonds rolls off on the river in this 3.85 million chip pot. Fedor has the nuts and checks again, Randy. Suspecting that Soiza has hit this flop in a meaningful way, given the two barrels on the prior two streets. Is Michael 
going to be able to keep it clean with the check back. That is a coordinated development, that six. Did he just say all in? He's out. All his ship's gone. Nicely played from Fedor Holtz. You're right. When he bets the flop and turn, that's an okay run out for Ace King and two aces, something that can multi barrel, get paid off. Fedor chipping up nicely. One million nine hundred and twenty five. Seventy five. Chipping down, however, is Soiza, who just has such a great attitude out there on the felt, Randy. Don't let me take that beat. Ace King against A seven backdoor diamonds. I got the guy all but tapping out in the octagon. And then new life on the turn and then disaster for me on the river. Might be flipping the table. <laughs> He's, he's actually like the guy who's least likely to flip the table here, the remaining five. He's, he's I'm not even at the final table, you and I'm the more likely to flip us. it than anyone that's at it. <laughs> like, that's just not deserved. Let me just flip the table for you. Chips I'm an unhinged everywhere. ape, Randy. Okay? Not fully evolved. So that's going to bring Theodore up to second, 7.8 million. Soiza, third, 6.1. Clear short stack is Smerkovic, 19 big blinds, 2.9 million in chips. Currently the big blind. Probably going to get attacked by one of these two players. Mm -hmm. We'll see. One out. Oh, you Please attack me. I've got two aces in the big blind. Soyce has got the right kind of kit to do some attacking with, too. Jack-10 suited. All in. Jams it, and this is devastating. <laughs> That's all about turning one over at a time, two aces <laughs> I, I, I just peeled it. I, 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 didn't, I didn't look at it. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was funny, though. <laughs> Teddy KGB. But you got to be careful. Yeah, it was weird. He, sure he kind of sweated oh. openly. Didn't know what he I had. Of course, the RFID idea picked yeah. it up. Just, just That's a scene see. from a movie. Sokovic yeah. <laughs> just one <laughs> ace, two ace. Yeah, I didn't, Call. I, didn't, I was just, oh, ace. Yeah. To the flop we go. Soyuz has got Smilkovich covered, and he's got a ray of hope, courtesy of a jack high flop. Flop is a good sweat. Turn. Not what he needs, as Smilkovic just needs to fade a jack to take his bite out of Soiza, and he's done it. And what back-to-back -back blows to Michael Soiza, who moments ago was at the top of the chip counts. He had an extra digit in his chip stack. He is falling. One of Malaysia's finest. Just can't hold on to those chips. Cooler situations. Two million. million. Soiza to the bottom. Twenty-three big blinds. Good. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> How much respect do I have for Soyce's mindset, Randy? And and I think everyone else out there can really just place him firmly in the category of a role model in terms of mindset. Like one hour. Yeah, I mean, easy. I got this king. I got it in bed, and I, I can take it. You know, like it's easy. How as easy as it gets, you know? It's true. Yeah. You didn't I even got sweat. Easy as jacks, I got it in. I win, you know. But, well, that's true too. Yeah. You didn't even need to sweat. You flop. Confidence. Yeah. One out is all I need. More than enough. Love this guy. It's true, though. He could be out of the tournament with that ace king against two kings of Fedor earlier. He's gotten some pay jumps. Lots of stack to still play for. Perspective. And still life, albeit on the shorty. But. North of it 20 is. bigs, it's not the end of the road by any stretch for Soiza as we see Shikurchi's big blind turn into top pair and a flush draw well out in front of Mateos, the aggressor pre, who's got two overs and a gutty. 
We have a lot of interaction here for Adrian with Tails' hand. Looks like he wants to reach for chips. Spaniard bringing in a sizable bet, 500k. North of half pot, Talal. Check call, check raise, both viable options. We know he likes to put some pressure on his opponents. How uncomfortable is this, is that you've got clean outs to the nuts and you get check raise. It just feels like you might be wasting your hand. Regretting the bet. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad C bet. I'm no. just saying, like, it sucks. You don't want to get check raised in this spot. A Especially with no chips. diamond in your hand, right? Yeah, no diamond in your hand, not great. A million more chips. You call. Maybe you hit a queen and this guy's already got two pair plus. You lose all your chips. Good lay down here. Discipline. You don't want to stay attached to your hand. To law, deny some equity there. Nicely done. He is just really pouncing away. 37% of all of the chips right now, Ali. 84 big blinds. That is a massive stack with five remaining. He, most likely, the most comfortable at these stakes right now, too. 3.2 milli up top. Just 10% of the chips for Soiza. Not so good. Well, disregard the percentages. Let's just talk about the fact that he has enough big blinds, stack depth to kind of still play poker. It's not a all inner fold proposition. No, most certainly not. Got some room to chill. Maybe some big clashes will happen. Remember, they guaranteed 965k. It's a good payday regardless of where you fall. Mm -hmm. Helps sort of uh, ease the pain of the beats that he just took. But It's like, man, how come Talal is involved in every single pot? Won't this guy just fold? Calls in the small blind. Smirkovich of A6. Betting lead. Not the greatest hand, though. Not a great flop either. Neither player connecting with the Jack A4 board. Smilkovich, though, with control. And Shikurchi checks it over to him. Keep in mind that they all just saw him check raise a flop. They don't know his cards, but they can see that he's willing to put your stack to the test at any moment. Check back. Blank. Look at Talal just immediately grabbing some chips. Well, he's not betting them, but he's thinking about it. Might feel ace high is a large part of Daniel Smirkovich's range. Start with a check. Doesn't mean he's giving up. Daniel might be happy to try to show this down without putting a single chip in. So far it is. Yeah. Ace. Nice development. I think we might see a chip or two go in now. Yeah. I think so. As played, it does seem that Daniel Smirkovich's range has very ace high heavy. Would now have a pair of aces, so I don't think Talal would be looking to pay off. Daniel Smirkovich's kicker, not so good. Actually, checks it back. Just like, I don't want to deal with a funny situation where you check raise me for a lot of chips. No respect to the chip leader. Event number nine, third day, final table, our 100K main event, a record breaker, 13.5 million in the prize pool, 965 on tap, and of course, the big prize of 3.25 million to the winner as Soiza with pocket eights. Might feel that big prize yeah. slipping away given the last orbit, but 
composed. No. Don't lose your confidence right now, Ali. Yeah. He knows how this game goes. Easy come, easy go, but it can come back. Queen Jack suited. Daniel in position, flat call. <coughs> uh oh. I know it's just ace five suited, but he just put it in, in the hands of Talal Shakurchi in the chip lead. Somewhere he out there. He grabbed more than three black chips, mind yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Solvers are celebrating as the three bet comes in from the button. Snap fold from two eights. Man, the solvers must be so happy with these poker oh, players. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, they just keep raking in the chips. Oh, my. No, stop, stop, stop. Smirkovich, the back raise all in for 40 big blinds of Queen Jack suited. Ladies it's and just gentlemen, straight up. I give you Daniel Smilkovich. Stone Cold Gangster. Stone Cold. No time banks used, mind you. Did you see that? Less than five seconds. All in. Uh, I was about to give a round of applause for Talal Shakurchi there. Haven't seen clubs. stuffing like that at a table since Thanksgiving. This Smilkovich is... That's One a exciting player, man. Glad to have him. I am very glad to have him. Lucky tracksuit. Something tells me, though, while we're glad to have him, Randy, <laughs> they these other four out there at the FT are not. Solvers back. Round two. <laughs> Different player. Different well, positions. Let's see whether or not the seven do suited is going to pique Fedor's interest first. Got our answer. He limps in. It's Revenge of the Solvers, except the problem was Daniel Smilkovich got in the way. Yeah. I got your solver right here. <laughs> <laughs> I solved this one with Queen Jack suited. Yep. I mean, so I only had one button that was grayed and allowed yeah. to do raise. Take it. I can't I can't believe he jammed Queen Jack suited. Absolutely sick. You know, it's also a back raise all in, Ali. You know, like the guy who flat calls is not supposed to have a slow play there too much. I mean there's no world in which, though, with Ace-5 suited, we can stop and start to think about that reality and decide. No, just in case you're up guys against, like, line. some pocket pair that's got you dominated still. So it's just it's fascinating poker. This is what we want to see in the main event, world-class play, people going with their gut, conviction. <coughs> Fedor's got chips now, so he's going to pump the pressure. I dare not predict what Smirkovich will do here with Jack-10. Looks like reaching for calling chips. A fair fight. Monotone, 7-6 deuce board. Both players with a flush draw here. Smirkovich knuckles over to Fedor. Got a pair in the second nut flush draw. Plenty of kit. Yeah, nice, nice flop for Fedor. No, he does, probably doesn't mind putting some chips in there. Knows he's got backup. Got to start charging your opponents. Smirkovich. Jack 10, two overs, 10 of spades. 10 of spades is a decent spade to play with. It's a small bet, too. It wouldn't surprise me if he wants to continue here. But in which manner? Will be call. Add another half milli to the pot. And add some outs for Smilkovich now. Jack of the 10 were already good. Now the 9. Give him the gut shot. Yeah, this is the fun one. You can see that Smirkovich 
I was gonna say, he might lead into this. This is the card that's supposed to hit him. He's got backup in case he gets called. You know, if Fedor was just barreling a flop of random cards, it's gonna be hard for him to continue. As played, Fedor, he doesn't like to see someone lead into him on the eight. He can easily be beat now, but he's got the spade draw. Maybe hit trip sixes. Maybe some two pair with king six. Fedor flats and then the jack of hearts. Binking Smilkovich for the best hand and kind of card that might see him check? Or is he going to go for value? I think there's a reasonable case for him to go for some value here, but not in the form of a bigger bet because he could still be behind, whether it's two pair or like an old pair. Yeah, I like this kind of milky bet. Get Trying to get some crying calls out of your opponent. You would expect this to get checked through and you miss value. It's a really nice size. Hand's not over, though. We know Fedor's capable of some sick raise. Well, he had a little skeptical look on him when he flatted that turn lead. Yeah, he did. A raise would be unexpected, though, right? You're just calling a small turn lead on this board texture. If you flop the flush, you might have raised with deep stacks, so it might be... Not that credible for him to raise now. We'll see. Bottom pair. Got some showdown value, not a lot. Maybe he beats some queen X, queen of spades that check call lead. Crying call. Well done, Smirkovich. Really nicely navigated. 9.3 million in chips. Very impressive so far in this stint. I'll tell you what, Daniel's approach is in part what earns him those calls, right? Because you know he's a guy that's not just going to be ABC. He's not, you know, no shame in it. You play GTO, you play optimally. Obviously, there's some exploitative aspects to it. But this Daniel guy, we just saw it. Queen Jack suited. Just what? So Fedor keeping an eye on him there. Pair of sixes. And in... Some weird ways he was right. It's just that the jack hit Smilkovich on the river as he has worked his way into second place ahead of Fedor after that exchange. Soiza at the bottom. Shakurchi up top as the blinds move to 100, 200,000 with a 200K big blind Annie. Counts brought to you by, by our title sponsor, GG Poker. Adrian Mateos just fold King-10 offsuit, 20 big blinds up front. Battle of the top two giants, 8-7 suited. Flat, small blind, check back from Shakurchi, queen-9 deuce board. Flush draw acquired. Flush draw checks. Getting some stats from Shakurchi, which is six high. It's just a binary act. Yeah. Oh, so you checked? You I got less chips than me? Let's go. Maybe the 200K with the 6.5 is accomplishing the same thing. Yeah, I would say so. Too rich. <laughs> it's like, oh, just an extra 100k. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. And too much turn for Shakurchi to be drawing live as the King of Diamonds seals this one for Smilkovich, who flatted. Till all seems done with this one after checking back. With the quick check through on the turn, I think Daniel might be thinking he's up against a Queen X or 9X a lot even though it's not the case here. He might size in a way to get those hands to pay off. Ten 
taking a look up. 300. Maybe, maybe some randomizer in there. Who knows? Sizing in line with the hands he was trying to get pay off. Smoke a bitch, man. Guy feels like he is right at home here. He needs to splash the pot at least once today. I just need him to do the Teddy KGB. I agree. I I would love to see it. Instantly gain so many fans. Yeah. I want him to say call with the worst hand on the river <laughs> and then frisbee each of the chips for the call into the chest of whoever it is that won the pot. Yeah, Ollie, can you slide some Oreos next to him and just we see if he We need a villain, them? Randy. We okay? Do. Maybe we've got him in Smilkovich. I mean, he plays. <laughs> he plays like one, right? Like just going after it. You think I'm kidding? I went to the market and I looked for Oreos yesterday. They didn't have them. Vietnamese Oreos? Is that a thing? I think they're just Oreos, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a dessert bon me. We see Ace Queen suited for Talal Shakurchi. Over the top of that, Fedor King 10. Ends the affair with no further fireworks. Well, the top two guys are really just pushing their ways, distancing, the, distancing themselves from the bottom three. Selfishly. Randy, and I would suspect that maybe some out there who are watching live might have this thought as well. I kind of want to indulge in a Smilkovich Shakurchi heads up battle. Wouldn't that be something? It would be. I don't think the other three players are appreciating you say that right no, now. They're of like, come on, nothing Ollie. against them. You don't want no Spaniard or Fader or Holtz or Soiza? But you I know what you. I'm getting at. I'm That's indulging. I want it, I want that to happen. If too. we had to cook a soup <laughs> using each of these five ingredients, the two spiciest would certainly be. They are Shikurchi. the two spiciest, no doubt. And Smilkovich, as Talal's got himself involved with Fedor, who defended his big with 10 6 suited. Ace Ace 9 flop. Shakurchi's to lay claim to in position, but he checks back. Turn whiffs. Well, Fedor got a free card, at least. Don't think he'll start firing now. Queen high. Decent showdown value. Or maybe we try to deny equity. We will go with the first. Queen high is good. Third ace. And high doesn't feel like a winner at showdown, but it also doesn't feel like the kind of hand as played that's going to be able to get through. So third straight check and on their backs, Shikurchi. Able to take it down. It's good when you got this boss image, right? Like people just don't think you're going to fold to river bet, so they don't even think about stabbing there. Because it did look like Talal had a high card hand, but Fedor is like not even worth thinking about. Talal's... On the stickier side, you know. I know. It's tough to play against, really, especially if he's picking up some hands here and there. You really are playing for a guessing game. and It's the people who are willing to splash that tend to ship tournaments a bit more. Looks like a... Exposed card. Which one do we get? Spade? In inadvertently. Uh -huh. Exposed card. I would imagine it's the eight of spades. So we got upgraded here. King 10. No, no eight of spades. <laughs> You're not allowed. It's fine. You, just, you don't have eight of spades anyway. <laughs> Randy, Smilkovich getting the replacement card and then opening the pot. I'm the uh, sick guy spades. that's like, no, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> playing this one because I'm not going to be able to deal if I get shown two aces or something. You don't want to get showered. Just on to the next one. Something weird happened. To be fair, our dealers are just so incredible here on tour. You'll certainly hear the players talk about it as well. Not an easy task, a lot of pressure to be perfect. Sometimes those cards can get exposed also by virtue of the draft that we have in here. We do leave the doors outside the tournament area open to keep the fresh air circulating in these tight quarters. 
can get under a card now and again. One more raise and take incoming, unless Smirkovich is getting really... Okay, yeah. He's still disciplined. Jack three off. 12.6 million in chips for Talal. Really has just been upwards lately. Another eight-figure stack, though, for Smilkovich. Such a great spot, by the way, though, for Talal to be directly to the left yes. of Daniel. That's a, a real advantage. And prior to Daniel being the other big stack, it was Soiza, where he was mm -hmm. two to the left. So real fortuitous seating situation. Yeah, I'd be most happy with... To law seat right now with the chip distribution. You can lean in on those middling stacks that has to fold to you. You can see, you know, Daniel has to play pretty passive here. Small blind versus big blind. But it's okay if you're getting free flops. 10 9 and Queen 6 come up empty on the Ace 4 3 board. Quick round of knuckles. Ace pairs. Now, you might have missed it earlier, but these two guys play very fast. They have a lot of time cards. Mm -hmm. They were teasing Smirkovich that he's only used two time cards. One he used by accident. Talal barely might have not even used one. Who knows? They play very confidently, very fast. Queen high, good. Ten high got showdown value. Well, if he's betting, it's not on account of showdown value. We know that. 100%. But he might not think Queen High would fold. But he is thinking about it. Does it have enough? He thinks not. He's gathering a lot of chips there. Is that full pot? Full pot. Wow. Oh my. Snap call. <laughs> Snap law. call by Queen High. Shakurchi, like you pointed out. What, what high Ten high. Ten high. Sticky? Plays fast and sticky. Impressive. Uh, you know, here's the thing. If a guy uses a couple time banks and makes the call, it's impressive enough. But when you're not even done putting your bet out there and his chips are in for the call, there is a little bit of aftertaste. Outplayed. Really, it was... Wow. Most people would have folded that, at least thought about it. It's a full pot size bet, Ali. 600K. It's a lot. Queen high. I got you. Bye bye, chips. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, clean. A couple of deuces here. Most certainly going to be jamming this one in. Doesn't play well post flop. Not going to be induced from a 16 big blind stack for a limp jam. I think Tolo knows this. Let's see. Oh, excuse. Oh, well, okay. No, grab some chips. Shuffling them. Pull in it is. He's just uh, man. I don't know. It's just this presence right now of him having this chip lead. Being sticky, winning pots, being aggressive. It's a little bit intimidating. I would imagine the other players at the table are like hoping someone else just get done by them. This is a delight, this final table here. We got a little something yeah, for yeah. everyone. Like a little curveball. People who just kind of mix it up. It's a real nice battle between these final five. We got a mystery card. Jamming is Soiza off of this 2.6. Currently good for about 13 bigs. Some kind of paint. Yeah, Queen 10 suited was pretty enough to call against a standard open, but not against the jam as Fedor Mux along with the Ruthers and takes it down. Peek at the counts there, brought to you by Poker Steak. You see Shakurchi 
the lone eight-figure stack now after taking a little nibble out of Smilkovich, who, to be fair, did serve it up. <laughs> Payouts, 965 on tap. Nice jump, 236K from fifth to fourth as we work our way toward our main event champion here in Hoi An. Now, ace 10. In the cutoff, Shikurchi. Going to work. Not surprised. Adrian Mateos has just kind of been laying back. Dwindled to 3 million. Nine four suited. Not much of a hand. He's going to lay it down. You can see Mateos and Soyuz are just kind of like waiting each other out. They got like the same stack. Not eight six. No, I had an ace, but not. It's not. Sorry, it's not. Eight, it's not the eight six. Do we coin the eight six to all yet? Because they seem to be talking about it a lot. Well, he seems to be playing it a lot too. <laughs> to all, by the way, for. Those that may not have the privilege of ever having been in a room with him or having shared a conversation, just such a gentle, soft-spoken soul, very kind-hearted. Until you bet with 10 high on the river, and then he takes your chips. With queen high. Scared me for a second. Mm. Do the aces on me again. <laughs> Another jam here from Soiza. Fives this time, gets through again. Pretty sick, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure, why not? That was funny. Yeah. 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 But I, I would only do it like when I'm at risk, like not. No, but but they're letting you know, like the rule is that you cannot yeah. expose your hand, yeah. even if you're whatever. I don't know. Like, that's this is the rule. Because uh, Rob did it yesterday as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah technically, it's a dead hand. If you, yeah. Even if you show one card, oh. it's a dead hand. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you have to be careful. Yeah. Onwards, no? I mean, no one's calling floor here, but, yeah. Yeah. but you know, it's uh, in theory, it could be uh, killed. Just beware. Okay, thank you. Don't do it at the EPT or something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting discussion there, Randy, about the manner in which Smilkovich rolled over the two aces against the Soyza Jam earlier would render his hand dead. Yeah, potentially. I mean, I'm a life donkey anyway, so I, I don't think... <laughs> Reads into account. No, no. Some people might abuse it. Yeah, that I can you totally can agree. Yeah, I, I can see that. But Talhal defending his big blind as Smilkovich that. anoints himself a live donkey. Like you don't need to do this. Fedor. Yeah. yeah. Ace Jack unimproved. He is the player we needed <laughs> all along. Smilkovich. Ace-jack high is good. Check through. Talal able to get a lot of free cards with this big stack. Players not wanting to see bet against him. Queen feels a good card for the ace-jack, but... Should be. But then you might get checked raised. That's annoying. He's going to reach for chips. Trying to deny some equity. It's a small little bet. Like, I think I got the best hand. Into the muck they go. <laughs> Fedor, one man fan club out there somewhere, rooting him on. It's probably Matthias Einbinger, his co founder. Of Poker Code, is it? Of Poker Code, mm -hmm. yeah. Training site? I believe so. Yeah. Fedor. I mean, if it's not him clapping, then he's not a very good co-founder, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Fedor playing for Team GG Poker. 
as is Jason Kuhn, who picked up his fifth title in the 50K Turbo yesterday. Actually sat down with him at breakfast prior to that event. He said he wasn't feeling well. A number oh. of people kind of had a little bug that went through and uh, claimed that that does have an impact on one's performance out there, but even a sick Jason Kuhn able to take down his fifth title all alone as the most decorated ever. Talal, not interested in the 7-5. You can't play every hand. So close to the 8-6, though. <laughs> it's uh, two pips off, right? Kind of, one for each. Fedor gets himself a walk. Characteristic to get a walk at this table. 10 7 suited's out. Controlled. Gear shift from Talal? Maybe a bit of a gear shift. A bit surprised he didn't open that one. Take a step back. Let the others have a go at it. Well, of course, one of the potential issues of letting the other guys get after each other and cannibalize is that ultimately one of them is going to square off with you with a lot more chips than if you are the one that clears the path yourself. Fedor opens to 450. Yeah, interesting sizing, actually. It's just above a min raise. I'm trying to figure out that he doesn't need to risk as many chips against a Michael Soiza 13 big blind stack. We'll take a flop. That's also it's a nine seven tray as he's got the flush draw. I wonder if Fedor comes in with a C bet or not. This is the type of board that hits the big blind a bit. Indies raise pots B V B check. Is aware. Soiza, does he want to take his flush draw with a bet or Maybe he's a little afraid of getting checked raised. Doesn't want to commit all the chips right now. Take one off. And pick up a gut shot. Courtesy of the Jack of Hearts, as this one stays level at 1.1. Tough for Queen 4, just absolutely no connection. This board is turning into a board that the big blind would have a piece, usually. It was raise 450 from Fedor, calling a big blind, check, check. Just gonna stab here, hope for the best. Going sizable, 575. Let's see, Soyuz has got inside straight draw, flush draw. Drop it in calling chips. Just south of 10 big blinds remaining. Near pot size. Hit. Yeah, Spade comes in for Soiza. And we'll see whether or not Fedor had just a delayed seabed bluff on his mind or if he has loftier aspirations with 2.25 in the middle. Just, he just doesn't have anything. Can he muscle his way through? I mean, he could be up against Jack X of Soiza. It's reasonable. Remember, sometimes it's precisely not having anything that 
lends to us wanting to get after it. Yeah, sometimes you're like, well, this is the bottom of my range. I need to fire away. Absolutely no chance. Queen high is good. But do you think you're going to get called if you bet all of it? Remember, so is it just defended and checked back on the 9-7 tray board. True. With a couple of spades in it. Then on the turn, the jack shows up, and he calls the barrel, and Fedor is unconvinced that that holding is going to be able to take this kind of heat. A 675K river bet. Yeah, Fedor just figures that he's at the bottom of his range. He needs to take a stance here. He knows that. He could easily have Jack X that's betting the turn. It would be hard for Soyza to call if he was holding like a bottom pair or similar. Soyza only has 1.9 million behind here. Oh, he's pushing these chips in, especially against the third pot bet. He's going to have to think that Jack X is a decent part of Fedor's value betting range. Let him figure out if he can call or not. Hold him. Nice. This one's over. As Soiza mutters those two little words that Fedor definitely didn't want to hear. Takes it down as the recovery effort now finds him fourth in chips overall. third rather yeah he was actually sitting very clearly on the bottom earlier now it's Mateos hasn't been V pipping too much on to 13 big blinds yeah really everybody's been kind of banging around without him mm -hmm. and you will dwindle down like you eat around a big blinds and antis and small blinds that's 500k a pop every round yeah it's up Aces for Mateos right on cue. We're going to see him participate. 400. Guaranteed VPIP now. Dust. Yeah, no customers in his future, I might imagine. This is when you flip the table. What do you mean, no action? Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you're not playing enough hands. Low V pit, <laughs> you open, and everyone knows you have aces, Randy. Okay, they got 7 3 off to in King 4. What, what are they going to do? <laughs> Battle? Quite a lot of aces. Four, at least. I know one. Five. Yeah, aces once, yeah? Yeah, aces once. Yeah, aces. No, aces. Did you show aces? Four. I think so. Is Soiza doing an aces check right now in the yeah. remainder of the field just <laughs> trying to figure out? <laughs> Checking the statistics. Who's most likely to get aces next? Because you haven't been dealt yeah. it. I don't, I don't think I have one today. It's a good hand, small blind versus big blind. It's not a good opponent to have in the big blind since he's got so many chips. Keep it small. It's okay. Smilkovich. Maybe hoping Talal got out of line in the big there as it comes 5-4 deuce and Talal's hit a piece. Second pair, snap check from Daniel, snap check back from Talal. They are fast players, Ali. High stakes. Nope. Same style. King. There are some straight draws out there. Might be worth betting this turn card. Five hundred K. I mean Talal's all seen him bet with ten high pot size. Yeah. There's no way he's folding a pair of fours. It was a pretty big bet though in relation to the six hundred in the middle. True. Nevertheless, add a million and bring us an eight. Smilkovich. I could see a Smirkovich value bet here. I could too. Nines feel pretty good. He's reaching for a lot of chips. This is some leveling. 
Wow. Snap. One million and the snap fold correctly from Shikurchi. Cameras can't even keep up. <laughs> no. Whenever these two are involved, it's just instant for it to lull. Folded around to Soiza, king eight of no interest. Button king five. See how Smilko feels about it, no? No thanks. Does he want to apply pressure? Limp. Jack mystery card for Mateos. Gonna take it upstairs. Yeah. Maybe a value hand, two jacks, ace jack. Let's see. Or if it's trash, it's jack deuce. <laughs> Onwards we go at a brisk pace. Pace five. Solver's second favorite hand. Smilkovich. Raise and take it as the field holds dust. Well, Randy, how did you start your day today? Well, I knew today was the record-breaking main event final table. Okay. So I decided to put on a dress shirt today, and I had to iron it. And that was a tough feat. Trying so basically to your whole morning was spent <laughs> ironing is what you're <laughs> I was you're trying to figure out, how did, how did I get this wrinkle here, this crease? <laughs> and then, you know what I did? I ran it twice. What I did was I took another dress shirt. I was like, I'm going to try again. Creases again. So I got one of them on right now. That was my day. Wait, you couldn't get the crease out of one <laughs> dress shirt, <laughs> so you gave up and then went to another dress shirt? Poker players like to run it twice. Two tries. I lost both of them. Randy, I'm pretty sure for like 90 cents, somebody would have like <laughs> happily ironed that for you. I. What did you do, Ali? Got my body ironed. Down at the spa. 90 minutes. You got good value? Shout out to Daisu. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what this young lady's name was, but she packed a punch. Got the elbow right in there. You know, first took a glance at her and thought, this, this might not be the weight class of therapist that I'm going to need to really get in there. What is the risk? But... Uh, not the case. Kind of acrobatic in there, if I'm honest. <laughs> acrobatic. Randy, there's some flips. There's some flips there's jumping some moves on your that back. don't happen in North America. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hop up on the table, <laughs> oh. knead you out like a pretzel, fold you over. I was like, okay. What do you like laundry folding you? Yeah, uh, listen, I felt like a piece of laundry in there. But I also felt like a million bucks when it was all said and done for the bargain basement price, mind you, of 67 U.S. dollars. Bottom pair against King High here, blind versus blind. Fedor has been going at Soyuz's big blind with some trashiest hands, right? Queen four, king six now. 
with a raise. Checking a flump once again, just like last time. Soy's a bottom pair. Checking back, keeping it clean. Freebie. Dusty three of hearts. Hmm. I don't think he can th he thinks he can get a better hand to fold. But he might feel like a little obligated to try to fight for it. We'll check. Discipline. So is it still not wanting to put chips in? Queen pairs now. As played, the king high has reasonable showdown value. You'll still beat some 9x hands. Little suited connectors. Ace x would jam on you decently pre flop, so be pretty happy to show down king high. King high. Wait, what? King high. Get it fixed. Three streets of checking from Soiza. And when you show up on the end there with bottom pair on the flop, run out that isn't very complicated, you do protect check back ranges. People might be less inclined to attack you. Very good point. This doesn't mean that, oh, I'm checking the flop, therefore I don't have a pair. And then people can't just relentlessly fire turns and rivers into you. They gotta be cautious, mindful. Every big blind's important in that final tables with these kind of stacks. It's just about the overall game plan, right? Like protecting your ch your checking ranges is very important as normally you won't be holding the top tier parts of the you know, made hands. Let's see what happens here. King five, small blind, decent stack. 5.2 million. Been cobbling away since took the big one-two punch. Has Soiza. Has elected to limp in. Smilkovich. Ace Jack. How does he want to approach it? Good stuff here of Ace Jack. Gonna pump it up. Maybe yeah. 3.54x. Ends it. It's a real close fight at the bottom. Adrian Mateos and Fedor Holtz separated by two big blinds. Notable absence, by the way, here on this Vietnam stop is the fresh face of the World Series of Poker main event champ who showed up in North Cyprus, Espen Jorstad, good friend oh. of Henry Kilbane's, in point. discussion with Henry, told me that Espen was just taking it easy, a little breather. Obviously, demands on his time have been pretty intense since winning the main event. Probably hasn't had a minute to himself. Did, thankfully, however, finally collect his payout. Oh, really? It's been quite some time, then. Remember, we brought it up in North Cyprus. He still had yet to get paid, so... Needless to say, the well, now that he's paid, we're going to see him at the next try and stop, hopefully. Now that he's paid, we're going to see him driving around in a Rolls Royce Phantom. No, he's not the guy. You win the main, you have to buy a nice car. What are you buying, Randy? Me? Yeah. I can, I can barely name a nice car for you. What, what like a Honda Civic? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Ali. Don't give me that look. Oh, Tesla. Can I can I go to Tesla? Is that all right? Is that big enough for you? Or do you need to go bigger? you need to go Lamborghini? You could win a satellite <coughs> and buy a Tesla. <laughs> okay, Ollie, what I are you... I said the main event, The main event, Randy. Of, oh, we're talking about the WSOP main event. Yeah, we're talking about a multi-million dollar payout. Okay. Um, so I can go Bugatti. Love it. That's like all my bankroll, isn't it? No, you just won the World Series of Poker main. Probably pick up a Chiron for, I don't know, $3 million. Shikurchi, 
trying to pick up a big blind. He does. For 2.1. Yeah. Show him the ace. The classic. Like it's <laughs> when you're coming it's at it with 2.1, <laughs> you just want to make sure they know. It's like, hey, nothing fishy going on. Look at that bottom. Dead 11, heat, 11. Huh? Yeah. 50K separating a pack between those two. Chat, by the way, weighing in on that automotive discussion. Yes, please help me. Well, interestingly enough, Com Tam says, buy a VinFast. I didn't know what a VinFast was until arriving here in Vietnam. They've got their own automotive brand. Oh, I did not know mm -hmm. that. Not clear how fast they are. Could be Vin Slow. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't really seen. I mean, the can numbers. we buy? Can we buy a multiple, or is this like a? You could buy the company. <laughs> you could buy the company. Randy, what are you talking about? <laughs> New president, CEO, and owner of Vinfast, Randy Liu. <laughs> <laughs> Main event champion. <laughs> Smilkovich King 9 here cut off. Fedor's got the kit. I actually you know think I there's a decent chance he just slow plays his yeah, two aces. Yeah, pretty flop. 2.2, right? You want to try to find a way to chip up. You're not going to get many opportunities. You finally get dealt two aces. This is a nice play. 8 5 Trey. Aces. Stranglehold on this one. Slow played and still doing so. And a little bit of this decision for Fedor could be tethered to the fact that he expects Daniel to be on the more aggressive side of the spectrum in position against a big blind defense. So sure enough, here's the seabed. That's a very good point because sometimes you call it a big blind against players who aren't really swinging. Then you just collect the two big blinds. Whereas now you can be like, well, if I call... Pre-flop, I'm at least collecting a C-bound flop, so it's more like guaranteed three big blinds. Check raise. Wants to bring some focus to this thing now. Yeah, he's hoping to get it in now, although... 750? I don't know, Smirkovich is a... He is a suspicious customer from time to time. Oh, man. Right now he is. Getting sticky. Calls the extra 450,000. And this really is just to find out what's what on the turn, which is dry. Does help Fedor in terms of a wheel draw. Most people, when they check raise two aces with this stack to pot ratio on turn, will continue following through with an all in. But does Fedor have. <laughs> I mean, checking turn is would be unexpected. Maybe what's important is why did Daniel just call? Why didn't he put me in on a flop? Hmm. One point two back for Fedor. Yeah, not a lot. It's less than five big blinds. Oh my, that's sneaky. This I mean, is knowing your opponent. He could have sneezed and taken it, it felt like. Given the unimproved King Nine, but decides to check. If you're in Daniel's seat, Randy, preflop raiser, big blind defend. You get check raised on the 853 two spade board. Then your opponent checks. Clearly, we have our answer in terms of Daniel suspecting that Fedor's hand is not that good. Where do you put your opponent? I mean, for him to have floated that flop, he definitely thought there was error in Fedor's range. And when he got checked on a turn, he felt really good about it. But now he's just like, oh my gosh, what yeah. did I do? Nicely done. Yes, yeah, Smilkovich really falling into exactly little trap that Fedor had set. Yeah, Fedor actually won a lot of chips for just calling preflop. Mm -hmm. 1.8 million.
That is the task at hand. Making the most of every situation where you got the best of it and minimizing the damage when you're behind. Shikurchi, understandably going to work, and Fedor with the oh-so-pretty Jack-10 suited in the small. Some guys actually reshoved his prey flop. <coughs> I don't know if he's going to in this case. He could flat call. He could fold if he really wants to respect the current ICM situation. Yeah, just thinking, look, I distanced myself from Adrian Mateos. Let's not get involved without the goods. Maybe get that, that pay jump. You know, it's a, a quarter mil if they can survive one more. Jack-10 suited. Found the muck here, Randy. As Soiza left to defend. Unimproved are both players on the Queen-Jack-6 board. The turn, however, does bink Talal for the best hand. Are you surprised? that the Jack-10 suited ended up in the muck at all? It's understandable. You know, it's... The chips he gains from reshoving this hand is not worth busting out of the tournament right now, especially with Final Five. Pay jumps are bigger as less players are involved, or less players in remaining. He knows that Adrian Mateos is getting desperate soon, sitting on 11 big blinds. Flat calling to dwindle yourself down to make you... Back at the bottom of Adrian Mateos didn't seem very inviting for him. It, it's just like, yeah, it doesn't feel good folding this hand, but it's better than the other two options. By the way, Soiza did pick up a diamond draw on that turn. Yeah. Nevertheless, put it into the muck. Well, put your money on the GG Poker. Get yourself up to 100% deposit bonus for 600 bucks. Qualify for Triton events and even pick up a $50 Global Millions ticket. Just sign up using code TRITON2023 and get your fix on GG Poker. Elky, his avatar down there, was circling around on this stop. Didn't see him, though, playing any of the events, did you? I heard him say he was going to play the Mystery Bounty because okay. he can at least bust someone to make cash okay <laughs> but um no the live emoji himself was just <laughs> you know talking to people trying to improve the super millions out there i know he took reins on that yeah gg ambassador yeah their team were here just to check things out Now Smilkovic jamming over the top of Fedor's suited king open and taking it down with the dominant king-queen. Yeah, Smilkovic just feels very comfortable playing this final five first-timer at Triton. Just mm -hmm. very confident in his plays. Are you going it's to like, go well, if it's my time, it's my time. Taipei? Taipei, yeah, of course. Of course. Are you going to Taipei? Probably. All right. I've never been to Taiwan, so... It's nice. One million dollar main event guarantee? Not too bad. I mean, for 1.6k, it's big. Yeah, yeah it's pretty for Asia, it's big. Yeah. So he's always working. Yeah. I yep. suspect the... Check out the APT there. Next stop on the APT tour, of which he is a co-owner, is in Taipei. Have you been, Randy? Uh, yeah, I've been many times, actually. I love it. It's great. love to eat those soup dumplings. You like that oh, stuff? Oh, Xiaolongbao. Yes. Delicious. Oh, my foodie friend. It's good stuff. But have you ever had the stinky tofu. Oh. <laughs> you weren't going to like that one. So stinky flop for Jack-8 here is Fedor, the opener, Broadway gutty. The stinky tofu is 
really just vile. It literally smells like poo. And yet, Taiwanese people love it. I know. I can't do it either. I'm not sure why they're in love with it. As we know why Fedor was. Position, control of the betting. Broadway gut shot, bet and take it down. I'm sure there's people in chat right now defending the stinky tofu. I hope not. Now we're going to ban them right away. Doesn't matter how good something tastes, if it smells that bad, it shouldn't be served. I actually made my way down to the south of Taiwan to Kaohsiung. Flew in to Kaohsiung for a wedding. Super oh old Portuguese colony. Okay, history lesson. Island formerly known as Formosa, right? You, f you aware uh, of this? I'm aware You're of that word, that? yes. Yeah. Did not know that. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Can we get back to the poker, Ali? Sure. <laughs> Smokovic, Queen 10. Button open. Nice spot here for pocket threes. Still got fold equity, barely, with your stack size, but just enough. Lean on Smirkovic, who has been opening. All in. Much needed for his stack size. He Sorry. was being so patient. Mateos just Sorry, waiting wait. for the right spot. Sorry, wait. Me? It's 2.35. <laughs> Chat, by the way, stepping in to point out that Stinky Tofu, not the only item that's considered delicious, that smells horrendous, durian fruit. I cannot do durian. I really can't. For um, those that don't know, imagine farting into a Ziploc bag <laughs> continuously for the better part of a month. <laughs> then bore a hole into a melon, infuse it with that Ziploc <laughs> bag worth of air, let it steep, then carve open the fruit. I give you durian. What if you had to choose one of the two to eat for a whole month straight? That's the only thing you could eat. Guess I'm going to be on a starvation <laughs> protest. <laughs> Hunger strike. <laughs> you see Mateos limping in. I'll take a flop. Very important pop for these two guys. Gut shot straight draw against bottom pair here. Bit of pot control, jack four. Inside straight draw is tempting to bet. I mean, he could definitely could see Mateos have some hands that would check fold this flop. Not the jack four, but maybe in the form of some queen X's. Check for now. Another path to a straight yielded by the queen of clubs for Fedor, one of the jacks he'd be looking for, busy in Mateos's hand as he does add a gutter of his own. Let's see. I mean, you still have nine high. Double gutter. Draw to some pairs. Depends on what he thinks Mateos is limping pre-flop and checking twice with. King high, ace high, possible. Although ace high, I think, would jam pre-flop, so let's discount that a lot. It's a good bet here. 450k on the heels of two streets of perceived disinterest from Adrian Mateos, and not just perception, but possibly reality as we await Mateos's response. Going to make the call. Nice call here. Bottom pair. Draw two. Nice straight. Clean. Very clean. That's a good card from Mateos because it's hard for Fedor, Fedor to put in multiple barrels when it pairs the queen. As a 10 or 8 will feel pretty good. 
Not over yet. He's thinking about it. So limp preflop. Check, check, flop. Check, call. Now check to Fedor. I guess, yeah, Mateos definitely seems like he's paired here a lot. Well done. Yeah, just not a lot of naked draws that you would imagine would want to take a peek at a river as played. And Fedor pointing out that the queen was indeed a good river for Mateos. Yeah, he really wanted to fire again. Agreed. Welcome back to law. Queen four suited in the cutoff. Sixes for Fedor Holtz. You want to reshove these on the big stacks. They are the guys who are raising a lot of trash. I wonder to what we owe this seemingly random shift of gears where Shikurchi was not opening things like 10 7 suited in the cutoff. But then here he is with a queen four suited opening. Almost feels like maybe some randomization. Yeah, at maybe. Work as maybe Fedor. he felt like his frequency was a bit high earlier when he folded that ten seven suited. Mm -hmm. You know, he knows he's been a bit quiet. Was like, looks playable. I've got the chip lead. Let's go. You know, I'll put in surprise. He's got a lot of game flow in him. It's interesting you say that. I think we are responsible for keeping tabs on how we feel like the remainder of the field is perceiving. Mm -hmm. Our current table image. As much as the pros these days, like, you know, just mm -hmm. understand it's what the cards you're dealt and that's how you play and the frequencies just happen. Like, you can't help but notice someone getting involved in more pots than should be normal and then maybe adjusting your ranges accordingly. It's just natural. King Queen, back at it. This time he's got the kind of hand that can withstand some resistance. In the form of two eights from the big blind? I think so. But Smirkovic has got the stack size where he's not going to want to push in all these ships sitting in second, so we're likely to see a flop here. Run it. Some tread lightly out of the big bucks. Three, four, five. Smilkovich with the over pair. Ada Hart's working. Checks it over to Talal, who has air, and checks back. Things improving for Daniel. Yeah, great card for Smirkovich. You know, he's got a heart. Wouldn't be too worried about 6x from a hijack raise, especially one that did not bet the flop. He might still want to pot control a bit. We'll see. Looks like he's going to value bet. Against ASX. Looks like this one should end it. Sure enough. Five and a half. Take it down. It is whisper quiet at this final table right now. You surprised? I'm not. How often are you going to be at a main event final table, five remaining, playing for 3.2 mil up top? Do you want to be the guy that doesn't get a seven-figure payday? Do you want to be the six-figure payday guy in fifth? I would like to push back and suggest that being talkative in between hands, let's say, isn't necessarily something <laughs> that excludes one from candidacy for the title. You know, you they're, they're both. They're they're focused in right now, right? They're they're thinking about ranges regularly. We are playing for shot clock, so you know you need to make sure you're on point throughout each hand. Maybe you can notice some little tendencies in your opponents. 
even for the most seasoned veteran, not sure whether or not they're impacted by it, but they certainly acknowledge and recognize the pressure-packed nature of the spot that they're in right now. Yeah. Two kings. <coughs> Helping to relieve pressure, of course, being dealt kings. Five hundred to go. Smerkovich. Problems on the button for him. Ace Queen suited. If he bumps us up, we could have an all in pot. Yeah, four point four effective behind. As Fedor started with four point nine. Fuses lit by Daniel. As he goes to one point one and change. Shakurchi's fold will be easy. Mateo says ultimately. One would imagine will be an easy one as well, though you might recognize that queen jack of diamonds is the one that Daniel used to four bet jam against Talal. Different situation, though, as we send it back over to Fedor and await his directions. It's not a mandatory four bet jam, actually, because he knows Smirkovic likes to put pressure on. We saw him slow play two aces against him pre flop. He is going to jam. We're going get to get it in, though. Well, you suspected that this might be the case, is we'll go, we're going to play a 10.5 million chip pot here, which is going to be good for the chip lead. And then some, should Smokovic take it down, and good for second if Fedor takes it down. Tense moments broken by three cards. Nine, three, deuce. Not a heart out there. Trouble for Smilkovich. Is there a four, five, or queen to help him gain outs? No, there's the ace of spades to help him jump right in front. And now Fedor Hulse so improbably has two outs to avoid elimination. Find the king. No. It's the ten of spades. And acknowledgement by his fellow warriors at the final table that he got unlucky there. He knows it. Everybody knows it. But unfortunately, that's the way the cookie crumbles from time to time. And Fedor Hulse not going to be able to add a Triton title to his resume here today. But obviously, adding a very handsome 900 and 65,000 to his career Triton total, which measures over 9 million. Already has two titles. And this is ninth cash, a seal breaker here in Vietnam had not cashed thus far. So we got million We got million plus payouts. Million payouts, but GG for Fedor, right? You know he lost Kings twice, all in preflop to Ace X. I mean to still end up in the top five in spite of that. Maybe the next level. Demonstrates his tenacity and perseverance. Um, Nothing you can do. Randy the money got in pre. You got in with Kings twice. As a heavy favorite, you lose twice. It's, you get dealt out of the tournament sometimes. GG. Yeah. You played great. Another great series for Fedor, right? Uh, Cyprus was good for him, too. Had some final tables there. Well, like I said, this is his first cash here in Vietnam. Not sure how much he had invested in failing to cash to this point <coughs> as we see Mateos jamming the small into Soyuz's ace five. Bottom two stacks. They got to go for it. Yeah. Call. Declared by Soiza. Now we've got another clash. Directly on the heels of the loss of Fedor Holes. Yeah, it's got it's Might we see another elimination? Of course, Soiza being covered is the player ahead. An exact three to two favorite with almost seven million in the middle. This is a cooler small blind versus big blind with these four remaining chip distribution. Here we go. 
Jack 6-5 board, bottom pair for Soiza. Still in front by a larger margin now as Mateos, for the time being, hunts six outs. Four of Hearts increases those outs as Mateos has clean open ender cards. Given Soiza has no heart. The river. A nine. So close. And the grimace on Mateos' face is courtesy of the fact that he will be left with virtually nothing once he pays this off. Back-to-back oh, -back tournament defining moments. The Spaniard down to crumbs. Mm. Soiza, on the other hand, of course, Say what? enjoying the healthy double. Yeah, um, no, yeah, most of them. I give me seventy percent of them, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. What you gonna do? I couldn't do the ace ace, you know, ace five. Good enough. Boy, I guess. that's not a pleasant graphic there. <laughs> Which one was that? Just okay. two bigs for Mateos. Uh, uh. Still got a chance. He can pick up the big blind ante as well. So he just needs this spin up to get something going. Looks like he got a raise in front of him. Maybe this hand? What do you got? Nope. 5.25. With the Jack-10, Talal awaits Daniel's reaction. And with all those new chips, Smilkovich ready to defend and take one. He is the tournament chip leader. Yeah. Flops it. Six, seven, eight. The joint for Smilkovich. Talal drawing live, by the way, as he checks back the two overs in Gutty. Board pairs on the turn. Yeah, a quick check around on the flop. Daniel Smirkovich. I'm not surprised he's re reaching for a lot of chips. He also probably thinks that over pairs would slow play, well, play cautiously on this flop. Going to get a lot of value. Of course, 8x, 7x. You know, Talal was, was looking to peel a little bit, but this one's a little bit much for yeah. his hand. Two overs. Backdoor clubs coming in. You know, sometimes you hit a straight with a club, you lose a big pot because they got a flush. Full house is already possible. Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with Smokovich's sizing here. Just wanting to make sure anybody that wants to see a river here is going to pay a real price. Well, he's not out yet, but he is now. Prudent. Daniel, really? has been the story here. Up and over 15 million after that one. And starting to put a little space between himself and Talal. Yeah, we haven't been saying that at all, this final table. No. Talal has been at the top consistently. I mean, Talal still got a great stack, 12 million. He just got overtaken when Daniel took out Fedor Holtz for that huge pot, 10 million chips. Adrian, king eight. Feels like it's enough. You're going to have to eat the big blind shortly. You know what? Look at this. Limp. Creating an opportunity where maybe two other guys get it in, and you can just fold and keep your preserves. I mean. Advance. Every situation has been thought through by these guys. So Talal does check back. 875 in the middle, so certainly the pot laying Adrian the kind of price that's going to warrant getting his chips in regardless. Fortunately, he was sharing the eight with Talal, who fails to hit a three, checks over on the jack high board. The tail steaming oh. everything so precious, but the turn, a three 
Shikurchi now puts the 150 on request, and this is going to be Sick. a nasty sight for Mateos. Yeah. Wow. Got three outed there. Didn't bet the flop. Turn. Needs a king. Otherwise, we're going to be left with three. Rivers of Ten of Clubs, and that is the end of the road for El Matador, the Spaniard. Adrian Mateos going to finish in fourth place, as one might have imagined would be his fate on the back end of that confrontation with Soiza. Sixth career Triton Cash, his fourth of this festival, as he will add to over one million in career earnings but no title on this occasion. He felt very card dead this tournament. I don't really remember really like his confrontations, but if he told me you're going to be card dead throughout the final table and get a fourth place finish, it's not so bad, actually. No one's complaining about taking home 1.2 million plus. But now three remain, all of whom have locked up 1.45 million. Smilkovich gets to work as the big stack. It's 2.2 .2 for second. This is a big jump from third to second. Good point. Hang in 750 there. 750K plus. If you can work your way oh into second. And of course, Soiza, the man that has work to do to make that happen. And he's doing that work by three betting to 1.5 with the ace tray and taking it. Nice play. Soiza knows that he needs to make a stance to chip up. He's got a lot of chips to play for, so the other two can't really sit back. Otherwise, they're going to let Soiza back into the game. Soiza's already got two final tables under his belt here in Vietnam, a seventh in the 25K GG Super Millions, good for 164. That's more blank, no? And then an a ninth I mean, you can pay the big blind twice in the 75K, <laughs> good for 182.5. So he could have bought the action on poker stake, get value every single time. He you only final tables. You could have also bought a piece in this event of Smilkovich. So those who Ooh. bothered to head over to poker stake and get a taste of these guys have performing very well for themselves right mm -hmm. now in terms of ROI. Shikurchi's pocket sevens doesn't rate to get any patronage. Both blinds fold. He'll take it. It is interesting that we've got these three guys as our final three, Randy, because at the onset, we suspected, based on chips, a Soiza Shakurchi confrontation would be upon us, and then Soiza slipped down into the bottom ra yeah. ranks of the leaderboard while Smilkovich chipped up, and we suddenly felt like maybe it would be a Talal Daniel heads-up battle. But regardless of permutation, we are going to have a very real treat in store once we play heads-up for the title. Not to say we don't have one on our hands here and now with all three of these guys front and center. Daniel limping the jack three off, bottom of range, not tempting Talal to sprinkle as both players flop a pair, advantage Smilkovich, who is checking. Yep, bottom pair gonna take a stab here. Talal has been betting complete air multiple times in these confrontations. Check call it is. Four of diamonds. Talal. Barreling again. It's a bit mergy. He is value betting against ace high and king high. That would probably check called his flop. Limping preflop makes sense. Deep stacks.
They certainly know how to put chips in there. Here we go. Smokovic hanging tough. Now a weird spot as a four-liner showed up and Talal waves the white flag. Smokovic all too happy to get Jack three to show down with. Yeah, unexpected no, win on no further Fire admission River. costs. Yeah. But um, as you're saying, yeah, I think these three really are gonna. We're gonna have a good three hit, three handed match here. They seem to never have been shy of putting chips in, battling it out, especially Smirkovic and Talal. Regardless of which two players make it to the end. I feel like some more fireworks are coming in. Mm -hmm. Dynamite. Tens. On the topic of dynamite, bigger pocket pairs qualify. Let's see if the approach changes now that we're three-handed for Soizo for a hand like 7-5 offsuit. These hands were going into the muck when it was more full. But now it's different now, right? It's like, I all eyes on me. I need to chip up. I need to put myself in a position to win pots. Let's take a flop. And listen, he's deep enough to get himself involved in these spots as the jack-high board gives him an open ender. It gives Smilkovic something to think about in terms of the overcard. Check to him. 1.4 roughly in there. See bet flop. It's a small bet. 350k. Yeah. I think uh, a mixed strategy of check raising, check calling seems pretty good for Soiza. Smaller bets are probably expected, especially I can see a lot of hands that would see bet fold here. Check a raise. I don't think this hand's over yet, though. I think the two hit tens will peel one off, see what develops. Also depends on what frequency he thinks Soiza would actually check raise a jack X on the flop. Soiza's check raise, of course, does lay the groundwork for him to try to win this one unimproved as he's got control of the betting now with a dry deuce on the turn. Immediately reaches for some chips, mm -hmm. taking account. Let's see. He's got equity, of course, in the form of open it straight draw. Checking, not really that nice because you don't want to check call seven high. Just gonna fire into almost 3.2. Impressive. Yeah, sizing feels like the type that's going to leave two black tens even less comfortable than they were a street ago. I mean, it's never comfortable when you're faced with a check raise and there's an overcard to your pair, especially a turn barrel. Two tens, not over yet. He might come along for a call if he doesn't think that Jack X would check raise him at a high frequency on the flop. And Smirkovich is, you can't shake this man. Reaching for calling chips. Literally and proverbially. True. As another three million end up in the middle and almost 6.2 total. Soiza does hit some showdown value, though, with that seven of spades. And oftentimes, Randy, that will lead to a less aggressive line on the end. The seven is a very good card for him, besides, of course, making a straight. He does beat some hands, say, pocket fives, 6x, 4x. They could bet call. They can call a turn bet. As played, would love to see Soiza try to get the showdown for free. More. Taking a look at his chip count. Maybe a block bet? One. No, he's going wow. for a bluff. He's going for a bluff, Ali. Absolutely turning the hand into a bluff. Here is Soizo. 4.1. Snap. Promptly four. puts the two black tens into the muck. Circle wow. that pot, Randy. That's gun slinging right there. Michael Soiza rising up with a check raise and two follow through barrels to take one from the sticky. Daniel Smilkovic. Absolutely well played for both gladiators there. That was a no delight. Kidding. Didn't really see that one playing out that way in particular after the seven rolled off as Soiza's got himself level with Shikurchi and we've got a brand new ball game 
on our hands from the final table of the main event here at the Hoi An Resort and Golf in Hoi An, Vietnam. Welcoming you back inside the broadcast booth, Ali Najad alongside Randy Liu. Just about to step out and bring Henry Kilbane back in there, but talk about Michael Soiza, man. This is the guy that was up there at the top of the leaderboard for a decent chunk of time, then managed to weather the storm, and it was rough seas for him. Ended up at the bottom of the chip counts, but always had that kind of trademark positive attitude on him and manages to work his way back up. Now, in the fight, three left. That was a fight hand right there, right? 7-5. He made the showdown value and, and decided to just go for it, putting maximum pressure on the 210 snap fold. I mean, that's a man that plays with conviction, right? Like, he, he knows what happens. If the cards are dealt, it's, if, if it's my time, it's my time. But if I get the cards, I'm going to play them to what I think is perfection. Check raising that flop. Knowing his opponent is going to be a bit sticky. Betting the turn. Following through on the river, though, that's next level. Yeah. That's that's the street where I think both of us really kind of got a better appreciation mm -hmm. for who we're working with, with Michael Soiza out there and his bid for a title alongside the likes of Shakurchi and, of course, the leader, Smilkovich. Scheduled break. We will step aside in just a few minutes' time. We'll come back with continuing coverage in the hunt for a winner in Event 9, our main. Stay close. Knowing where to start when learning to play poker can be incredibly confusing. Well, we have the solution for you. Our free five-day course will teach you everything you need to know in five days to start making your first winnings at micro to mid stakes. No excuses, for free, check it out.
Fedor. Looking to hold with the Kings to become not only the chip leader, but to eliminate both Winfred Yu and Michael Soizer. Soizer does have Winfred covered. So should Fedor hold, he would go home with seventh place money. Sorry, How about this, Randy? Yes, six hundred. Oh, okay. <laughs> Two aces left. Three hundred and thirty-eight thousand difference between eighth and sixth. Ace on a flop. No way. One of two aces finding its way to the ace five deuce. Nobody with a club in hand. Winfred drawing to three outs. Fadal drawing to one out. As the jack of clubs <laughs> changes nothing on the turn. Nine of Diamonds is going to confirm the elimination of Winfred Yu. But more importantly, it's going to confirm the hold for Michael Soizer up to 6.1 million now. Fedor, nothing you can do with the two kings. Getting it in against. Ace King and Ace 10. We do lose Winfred Yu, of course, our two time Triton champion. One of the OGs of the Triton series has been to every single series, adding an additional. 418,000. Down at the bottom, you know, Fader on 23, Timothy Adams sat with 26 bigs, Nicky P, Petrangelo with 29 bigs. Talking of Nicky P, the real Nicky P. The real Nicky P, two jacks. Good hand. Oh my two God. Two aces. What is going on in this, this entire series, Randy? Every final table. Just when you think the dust has settled and we're going to be seven-handed for a while. What if history repeats itself? I mean, don't you dare. <laughs> Soiza got an aces versus jacks and lost in the 70K final table out in ninth. The same thing could happen. Oh, Soiza here sat two of seven. Petrangelo. 29 bigs facing. Does Petrangelo have another play <coughs> besides all in? Can he sometimes call a three bet here? I mean, there's no clear short stack that he can wait for. He's looking around. He sees that everyone's pretty safe and comfy. Maybe he just piles it in, expecting a lot of folds. Jax is often very good here. I wouldn't blame him. Neither would I. Seven remain. Knows that Soiza, second in chips, is going to have three bet folds. He's going to be leaning into Petrangelo's On. mid link stack. And, wow. Snap. Oh, boy. <laughs> Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. This is a chip lead pot between Michael Soiza and Nick Petrangelo. 7.5 million out there. Nicky P. It's coming back over the top for 29 big blinds. With the Jacks. Soiza involved in that three way all in just less than an orbit ago. Now two cards away from being the overwhelming chip leader and more importantly, eliminating a very tough opponent. One of America's finest, Nick Petrangelo, looking for a Jack and a Jack only. Biggest river card of both of their careers. Yeah. Ten of clubs seals Petrangelo's fate, and <coughs> can you believe, Randy? Deja vu. Aces against Jack. We are down to the final six, but more importantly, we've lost oh. one of the game's greatest, Nick Petrangelo, out in seventh, getting that monkey off of his back here at the Triton Super High Roller Series in Vietnam in the form of four caches. Has to be thrilled 
with this run here, although maybe a bitter taste as he heads home with 566,000. Maybe just the fact that we have so much ICM, Talal's the other big stack in the room. He just looks at the bigger picture, the macro of it, mm -hmm. and says, nah, Soyuz is not out of line here. Yeah, very well said, because, you know, T Talal had more chips than Soyuz in that hand. He could have busted him. Does Soyza really want to risk all of his chips in a situation with huge ICM implications? That's the question. Also, this he, hand, back he to was back. really setting himself up, by the way, for something like that. But indeed, Shikurchi from tens to jacks, back to back, confrontations with Soyza, who is a flat caller with ace queen on the button. And Tim Adams, off of that lean 3.8 million chip stack, has an ace queen of his own. Back-to-back -back hands where we've seen someone flat call, someone waking up with the hand that can put in more chips. Adams, 23 big blinds. Just no other play than all in of Ace Queen, especially against the open Razor, who's been opening very light. Mm -hmm. Two jacks. This is a cooler. Ace Queen. Two outs dead. I'm expecting a confrontation here. And so is it getting away. Yeah, of course, if Shakurchi, as one might expect, decides to make this call, Soiza will be heavily incentivized to sit this one out Three, as the eight, clear two. overall chip leader with north of 10 million. Holy. Yeah, Shakurchi jamming over the top just to make things official. And the loss of an ace or a queen out of Soiza's hands is a bad development for Adams. Over an 8 million chip pot. Yeah, this is a tournament defining moment for Timothy Adams. In rough shape. Two outs gone. Take a flop here. Ace in the window. Ooh. Jack! Wow! Adams thought maybe there was gin on that board, but a seven, then a jack revealed in that order. Shikurchi hits the set and leaves Adams drawing dead on the turn. You can feel the disappointment yeah. and even the sympathy, by the way, on the face of both Adams and in turn Shikurchi. So much respect for one another out here competing at these levels and so much at stake. GG, bro. He did nothing wrong. Timothy Adams played great. Another fine performance for him in the main event because he shipped the main event before at a Triton series in the 100K. Add 756K to that young man's career Triton total, which certainly isn't done being accumulated. They're impacted by it, but they certainly acknowledge and recognize the pressure packed nature of the spot that they're in right now. Yeah, two kings. <coughs> Helping to relieve pressure, of course, being dealt kings. Well, a very warm welcome back to the broadcast booth here at the Huayana Golf Resort and Casino. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, and we are three-handed in the biggest 100K of not only Triton history, but of poker history. 135 runners in this one. We're down to the final three players with Daniel Smilkovic leading Talal Shikurchi and Michael Soiza. When I departed, Randy, just two levels ago, Timothy Adams, Fedor Holtz, and Adrian Mates all had a stack to work with. Looking now, those three out of the tournament. Can you fill me in a little bit as to what has happened over the last two levels? Well, I mean, uh, Michael Soiza, you know, he's been in some fortunate spots. He got in ace-king against Fedor's two kings. A again? Yes, again. Hits two, the ace. Two times. Mind you, Winfred had ace-10. Okay. There was just two aces left, ace okay. on the flop. So uh, Soiza could have been out of this tournament, mm -hmm. and, yeah, that, that, that's a big one for Soiza. Mateos just kind of got card dead. Did have a clash with Soiza, BVB. Right. Ace high was good, or Ace X was good against King X. Now, down to the final three. Last hand before the break, though. Soiza, check raise, 7 5, Jack 6 4. Bets the turn. 
bets the river despite pairing despite pairing the seven. Mm -hmm. Got two tens of Smirkovich to fold all in jam bluff. Gangster moves being made on one of the biggest stages in the poker world. All three players guaranteed 1,450,000, which, if I'm not mistaken, looking at their stats prior to coming in, is a career record score for all three players. So every ladder here just adding on to their record scores. We're about to kick things off and throw things down to the main stage. 1,450,000 guaranteed for these final three, but of course, the 3,250,000 up top, but not only the money, the Triton main event trophy up for grabs as well as we throw it back down to the main stage. It is Germany's Daniel Smilkovic leading the final three players. Here, Chip Counts brought to you by PokerStake, who, if I'm not mistaken, another special shout out to PokerStake.com, Michael Soizer and Daniel Smilkovic, the only players to sell action into this main event. So congratulations to the viewers at home that managed to snag, you know, a little sweat. Yeah. Already for guaranteed sure. a 14x return. Yeah, Smirkovic in the chip lead. He did uh, dust off Fedor Holtz's pocket kings once again with ace queen suited all in pre flop. That's why he's at the top right now. Aye, aye, aye. So Fedor and pocket kings. Twice, huge pots. Yeah. You're right. It wasn't like he was down to 10 blinds. There were at least 20 blinds involved in both of them. Well, Fedor, another strong showing here in one of the bigger buy-in events of the series. But for now, our attention drawn to these three players, Radalot v. Smilkovic v. Soizer. Soizer, who, as we mentioned earlier on today, looking to move up to third on the Malaysian all-time money list with a win here today, would be second only to our founders, Paul and Richard. Michael Soiza makes the call here. Queen high flush draw. Pairs the bottom card. Soiza checks. Not till all is going to know that he's up against Asex a lot, so he's actually going to check here. Makes the flush for Michael Soiza. Good card for him because. Well, not only does he make a flush, but it's a clean run out if he's up against Asex. They're going to have to pay off a sizable bet. Let's see what he comes with. Talal did check back on the turn. Those are, looks like, 500k chips in his hand now. <coughs> and a snap fold from Talal, so Soiza. Moving up into second, still very close overall. 38 big blind average. Smilkovic on 43. Soiza and Shikurchi just under average, but yeah. plenty of stack. It's a tight cluster there. Guaranteed 1.45 million. Then 2.2 million. Then 3.2 million for the eventual champion. There's a lot, there's a lot on the line right now. Yeah. Final three payouts. All three of these players willing to splash, willing to make a stance. Queen nine to start things off. Dealer button. Pocket deuces for Daniel Smirkovich and Talosh Kirchi, ace queen suited. Well, those are calling chips from the small, and now Talal. Three-handed, just so much here. Ace, queen of hearts. Yeah, going to cut out re-raising chips. City on just under 30 big blinds. One quick fold and two down. Nice pickup. 10.6 million closes the gap once again. But given how, as you mentioned, clustered it is here, you know, <laughs> just a three bet getting through, changing things. I mean, Soiza on 40 bigs, Smilkovic on 38, Shikurchi on 35. 
Is this kind of this three-handed play now? Uh, see who we can lean into. See who that, we can that, uh, chip away at. Short ten, I think. Right now, it's yeah. I wouldn't really think they could lean in on one player specifically. You know, the shortest stack sitting on thirty-five big blinds. Maybe a bit more of a feeling out phase. Kings for Talal. Remember, he just squeezed the last pot. And once again, coming in for re-raising chips. Yeah, it's very easy to level yourself into thinking that they're at it. Yeah, and King Jack is a very playable hand here. Dealer button versus small blind, three-handed. Asking for a count. Well, he's suspicious. Going to take a flop here in position. King Jack. We drop a Jack. Could be really bad news for Smirkovic. Blanks out. Yeah, fortunately for the Smirkovic fans, does come 10 high. I see someone shiver in the chat asking if this will be a record career win for all three of them. If they take it down, they, it will be indeed. Talal's best career cash, 1.18. Soyza's best career cash, 1.42 million. One title to his name, and Smilkovic, newcomer to the live realm. Obviously, has won everything there is to win online, but lesser known in the live environment. We do have a Triton free roll on GG Poker starting in 12 millions password. For that one is Super Millions. No late reg. Join now. Get involved. Dalau looking for his first Triton there? trophy. Mm. I think eight. Could be less. So he's a gonna complete from the small. Smilkovic, thirty effective, pocket tens. Hey, he folded two tens of Soiza earlier. On a jack high board. Round two. Definitely a hand worthy of a raise. Three point five X. Yeah, nine points uh, nine point six. 9.6. 9 points. 9.6 Nine <laughs> suited. Oh. 9 right. million effective. Yeah, I can understand the limp call from the suited two gapper <laughs> of Soiza covers. Going to play the rest of the handout position, though. Yeah, in big trouble with the overpair. Going to be hard to win this pot. Especially on that flop. Nothing. But not a great flop for Smirkovic, right? Yes, he picks up inside straight drop, but it's three overs to, do, to his pocket pair. See how he proceeds against the small blind limp call. It's it's a tricky spot because you have range advantage, but then you don't want to bloat the pot of this hand. Right. Have clean outs as well. Does check through. Ace of spades rolling off on the turn. Yeah, I don't think Soyza is looking to get involved. For Daniel, nothing to really be worried about in terms of giving up a free card. So I think it's pretty good. No connection. Yeah, Smilkovic happy to try and get these two tens to show. Now let's see if Soiza now comes out firing. I don't think so because I'd imagine if someone is raising pre-flop and this flop comes out, well, never mind, sorry. Actually reaching for chips. So he must think that Daniel has some kind of showdown value that isn't that strong. Maybe like a queen X. Lays down the tens and Soiza once again gets Smerkovic to lay down two tens with the inferior hand. He's good. Yeah, Smirkovic just checking flop and turn and allowing Soiza to pounce with half pot. Get behind both players' play. 
Let us know in the chat who you guys are rooting for three-handed. Michael Soizer, Talal Shakirchi or Daniel Smilkovic. Pretty tight out there. Pretty tight as Shakirchi and Soizer are both tied at the top with 43 big blinds. And again, Talal, pocket kings, three-handed. What a time to start picking up top of range. Yeah, and his frequency looks pretty high right now, too, so he might even get some resistance. 6-5 off, so not ideal. Let's see if Smirkovic can try to avoid a disaster. But no, he's coming along here with 6-5 off suit in big tr trouble. 2.2 million in the middle. Looking for little cards. Gets none of, none of it. Overcard to the Kings. Still value to be had. Blind view blind. Whilst we have you all here, there's Talau. Scoops in another pot. Do drop us a quick like for those of you watching over on YouTube. Completely free. Helps us grow the channel. Going to be bringing you more high stakes poker coverage from this series here in Vietnam. And if you hadn't already heard, our next two stops have been announced. Cyprus in May, followed by London, end of July, beginning of August. So click that subscribe button as well. Have a ton of cash game content that we still haven't released from previous stops. Going to be coming out on our YouTube between now and Cyprus. And also, it keeps the social media team happy when the likes go up. Who wouldn't want to like something when it's completely free, Randy? And any other selling points? No, well said. Just likes. There we go. Do just it. Just likes. Just, just make it happen. Free content. Onto the hand. Button cool. open, ace and hearts, small blind, two fours, check through. Four still best. More overcards. More overcards came. But I think ace nine would be pretty happy to keep checking if it gets the opportunity to do so. Yeah, it is a small blind flat. That range of hands. Looking to call out of the small blind. Going to contain a lot of Broadway type holdings. It. As well as small pairs. And a Both hands with some good showdown value. Maybe Talal thinks he's got a potential small value. We'll check. And showdown the winner. Smirkovic down to 6.6 .6 million after losing multiple pots. Yeah, three-handed. Certainly not going his way. not by doing anything wrong either. A better way to watch poker, Randy, if you haven't already heard, ladies and gentlemen, the Triton Poker Plus app you can sweat along all of the outer tables in real time. You can see live hand histories from some of your favorite poker players. And for those of you that were watching last night, you were the first people to find out that Jason Kuhn had won his fifth title in that 50k turbo due to the fact that we were obviously streaming this main event if you haven't already downloaded it do and drop us a follow over on socials a lot of behind the scenes content interviews with some of your favorite poker players as well as some you know, just coverage of the shenanigans that goes on off the felt Talal connecting with bottom pair. Checks through on the Jack-10-4 as the seven of clubs rolls off on the turn, giving Daniel 89% of the equity with one to come. 1.65 milli. Check. Pair four still got some good showdown value. Yeah, for sure. Shikurchi 
more than happy to try and get this one to show down. See if Smilkovic wants to try and get some value. It's a hard value bet to make with third pair, but he's going to be able to find it. Figures that a Jack X or 10 X would bet a lot by now. Snap. Seven. Nice value there. These little pods really do add up, especially two big blinds. Nice stuff. Well executed by Smirkovic. Looks like Soyz has downloaded the Triton Poker Plus app. <laughs> yeah, he's looking at those stack sizes. No shame in that. Smirkovic suited three. Those are raising chips there. These two play so fast. Yeah, they were bragging earlier on about time cards. Yeah, the fact that they had only used a couple as we dive back into this. Daniel flopping a flush. Snap check. Shikurchi with the seven of spades in hand, drawing live on the 10.85. Maybe a hand he wants to put to work. No, going to check behind. 2.3 to fight for. Pairs the seven. Daniel, is he going to go for some value? Is the type of board that smashes a big blind in some manner? Checks again. This is a, some slow play. See if Shikurchi takes the bait. Doesn't. Checks again. Now a four liner on board. Well, it seems like he had a game plan to try to trap his opponent. Is he going to go for the triple check? Maybe hoping his opponent has a nine. He can get value in check raise. Or maybe his opponent will represent the nine. I think the check is reasonable. Well, <laughs> flop it. Yep. Three high flush. Giving Talhau as many opportunities as possible to take a stab there. So after a rough start to the three-handed play, a couple of pots, some wonderful value being extracted from that third pair of sevens. And now... This blind v blind battle. Three high raises. <laughs> suited. Suited. <laughs> Just suited. What can I do? <laughs> <laughs> I love, you know, we're playing for millions and there's there's still some solid needles and banter between these three. I mean Smirkovich did call himself a live donkey. Self proclaimed, okay? I didn't say it. A live donkey. <coughs> Referring to that's a big raise. 1.45 million. Big blind's 300k. Just slightly south of 5x. So he's a 6.5 suited. Didn't expect this sizing. Cool. Still going to make the call. And we already have, what, 3 million in the middle? Just pre flop. Two okay hands. Go on, Randy. Do tell. There's 10 bigs in the middle. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Doesn't hit Soisa at all. I mean, he's reaching for chips. His hand is over shortly. Incoming now. There is a 1.8 million difference between third and first. All of these pots adding up with mm. millions on the line. He hasn't folded yet, surprisingly. Trying to interpret the pre-flop raise in conjunction with the flop c-bet. Time card, okay. So he has got six high, right? He's got six high, but he's also got the sauce. He's got the spice. Maybe looking at that seven of spades. Thinking, yeah. well, look, I'm in position. I can float and turn some equity. Does eventually bow. And you know, these two, a lot of history, 
Randy as well, right? You know, we saw that four bet pot that the went eight, viral. Six yeah, you know, these guys have been battling. They've been sat next to each other for hours. So there's always some meta, some dynamics that we're unfamiliar with. Even though we can see the whole cards, there's there's a lot more going on. <coughs> so there's current ladder between third and second. 757,000 difference between silver and bronze. BVB, Ace King. Roughly. Nutty. Trap. Trappy indeed. Does not get the bait. Flops Broadway. Daniel Smirkovich, top pair. Top pair is looking pretty good, but it is in rough shape. And so is just going to casually check the nuts. Oh, my. Randy, what a bot. What about that for a cooler? Well, the check will save him some chips. Eight, a nice card for Daniel in the sense that maybe he won't be losing too much as it brings out a four-liner. Does Soiza go for value now? No, he's keeping, he's trying to give some rope to Smirkovich. One more check around. Well, Daniel has done an incredible job of not putting any more chips in the middle here. Soiza laying the trap, flopping the nut straight. Well, now it's the time to bet. Reaching for chips. Pot size bet, snap call, Ace King's good. It's a good end. Pretty good, huh? The timing of these guys. Pretty good hand, pretty good flop. Daniel paying him off after flopping top pair. And with that, Soiser separating himself a little bit from the German professional. Always asking me for chips. Ace five offsuit for Michael Soiza. Very playable. First one to act. Gonna come in swinging. Does pick up a customer out of the big hedge fund manager, Talal Shikurchi. It's always a flopping best on the ace four deuce. Do you think that the investors in Shikurchi's hedge fund are going to look at this and be like, man, that's that's my guy right there. He's That's the guy putting our money to work. If there's ever a guy that I'm going to trust, it's going to be a guy that doesn't even play this game professionally and crushes the highest stakes. If he can do that, then he can do anything, right? Yeah, I I, I think that's what the investors are thinking. Exactly, Henry. Shout out to <laughs> the, the investors out there watching. Oh, nice. Their man, their hedge fund manager going to work. Yo, 8-6 suited. Call 4-bet. Get kings to fold. They love to see it. That would suggest that he likes high variance investing. Change so fast, like I don't even know what's going on. I well, no yeah, idea. I mean, what what do you want? You wanna <laughs> you wanna put your money in some like three percent return kind of thing? No, like you want your 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 fund to you know, beat the S and P and make you eight percent a year and that kind of stuff. That's that's the guy to do it. This guy here, four bet parts of eight six suited. Let's be honest. Most hedge fund managers are button clickers anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> they see a stock, they like it, 
they buy. It's that easy as we dive back into this modern day cooler. Button v big blind, bottom pair v middle pair. Check through. Not a nice card for either hand. But you know what? Backdoor clubs for Smirkovic. Just notice. See if he comes for a delayed C bet. Little stab in the dark. Yeah, it looks like he is reaching for chips. Just wants to try to deny some equity, get some, some value from 7x. Control the situation. So he's a bottom pair, no kicker. Five of clubs in hand, blocking some flush draws. Price is just too good for him to fold, so he'll take one off. Seven. Oh. Does Eight. check through and one Daniel. Heading on the up. It's a rough start to three-handed play. He's managed to climb his way back up from six million to nine million. <coughs> so no runaway chip leader here, three-handed. Five three hearts. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Button like, raising. I didn't mean standard to. so far. Suited connector. Yeah, all of them with with uh, a suit of their own. KGB, okay, look like how about that for a flop? How about that? for a flop, Randy. Top two for Daniel. Shikurchi with a gut shot straight flush draw. Yeah, gonna fire here. Just smashing that flop. Lots of fold equity. You can apply pressure on a lot of turn cards. Daniel with top two pair. Does he go for check call? Does he go for check raise? Well, facing a half pot C bet. Oh, he's reaching for racing chips right now, very quickly. Can't say I blame him. Top two, if Shikurchi does have an overpair, wants to get as much money in the middle before a scare card rolls off. All and in. Snap. 18 million in the middle, Henry. Lots of outs. 60% chance. 59 for Daniel Smirkovich to stay in this tournament and be a huge chip leader. Heart or a four needed for Talao. And it delivers itself in the form of the Ten of Hearts on the turn for an overwhelming shift in equities. Heart, heart. Smilkovic saying seven always coming, but doesn't come this time round as we see the German online phenom bow out third in the 100k main event daniel smilkovic going home with 1,450,000 for his efforts a career record score in the live arena and a great start to his triton track record as we find ourselves heads up in a very short frame of time randy hasn't been too long since uh we kick things off here in this 100k, record-breaking 100k, down to the final two players, Talal Shikurchi on line crushes. We welcome you back to the break desk here. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. Randy, that three-handed play, let's just call a spade a spade, really just not going Smilkovic's way, just straight off the bat, running into top of range a lot of the time. 
Yeah, he ran into top of range, but you know, his opponents made some pretty good plays at him, getting the fold pocket tens. Um, but it really what came down to that final hand, t flopping top two against the 5-3 of hearts. It has a flush straight draw. It has a flush draw. Chips were going to go fly in. Right. It was the, the hand that was going to maybe make him a chip leader or out in third, and it was the latter. Well, he was a 59% favorite to become the chip leader, but that 10 of hearts rolling off on the turn, giving Talal Shakurchi the overwhelming chip lead coming into this heads-up match. Almost a 2-1 to one chip lead over Michael Soizer. Both players guaranteed 2,207,000 for both of these players. A record-breaking score. Soizer, a little bit more on the line. If he does win, he moves up to third on Malaysia's all-time minus, as we already mentioned. One of the main storylines coming out of this final table. Uh, myself and Randy are going to be stepping aside for a brief five-minute break for what is set to be an epic heads-up match between Talal Shakurji and Michael Soizer. But instead of throwing the people at home to commercials, we've got an epic hand history breakdown from none other than Ben CB from over at Razor Edge between a certain Eric Seidel and Victor Malinowski. Enjoy, and we'll see you guys on the flip side of this break. That was a big move by Victor, very, very risky. But let's get right into it to see if that was a good play or maybe a punt. Goes to work, 8-9 suited up against A7 suited, Seidel in position. Preflop now with ICM consideration, we see that 9-8 suited shouldn't be an open race. However, you can make adjustments. If you give you an edge on some of the opponents that are sitting behind, especially in the blinds, it's a fine open race. We see that in chip EV, it is an open race. But now under ICM consideration, and we are pretty getting pretty close to the money, we want to fold 9-8 suited and race more Broadway and ASX heavy. But well behind, top pair for Wichter. See someone in the background doing no work. Seidel. Hmm. A7 of spades, wants to see a turn card. Yeah. On the flop, I would prefer lots of checking here. We're going to have lots of king, queen off, queen, jack off, ace, ten off, which Eric does not have. He's flooding very suited heavy. He's going to have all three sets and a lot of hands that can float against a small sizing, such as queen, ten and diamonds. So I would prefer either big sizing to fold out all these broad ways that can float against us and also get maximum value if we have pocket queens and Eric sits on the nine or has to call once with pocket eights. Victor decides to bet small, which is also fine. Again, this is the strategy I would be playing. And Eric has an easy call now with a seven spades. Equity available with the right card and that rates to be among the most right cards mm -hmm. as a wheel and seven high straight draw double gutty appears and a little nut flush draw for dessert. Pot isn't his just yet. But Malinowski is going to defer. Should never really face a check raise on the under the gun opening range on this turn card. So they can still have all of the sets, all of the straights. Obviously, we do reserve the right to change our minds depending on variables. What a gangster. You said there was something that we didn't expect and have we not yet come to expect the unexpected out of Limitless? Well, certainly from a player of his caliber finding the small spots and Seidel flicking in the call with 41% equity. Now things are getting very interesting on the turn. And spoiler here, I actually really like Victor's play. He decides to check. Now we really want to pot control because if we bet, not that many weaker hands are going to be calling. So he checks and Eric decides to go for a big bet with his ace high flush shot and double gut shot. I kind of like this play. I think you can go for small, big or check. All options are fine. That's not going to determine whether you're going to crush or make a lot of money with poker. However, Victor makes a very interesting decision here. And I kind of like check jamming your 9-8 here for several reasons. You actually start folding out better hands. If Ilk sits on king-9 suited or queen-9 suited, jack-9 or 10-9 suited, he's actually supposed to fold these. And I do believe that he would bet fold these hands. Also, very often if he ends up bet calling, he's going to be bet calling some of the very strong draws, such as a7 and spades. So it's a nice hand to get called by worse hands, but also start folding out better hands. 
And I think once Eric bets that big, it's hard to fold. Your ace might be live or is very likely live. You have a double gut shot, the nut flush draw, you get a good price. Here and there, Victor might be check shoving your worst draw, like king jack in spades, king queen in spades. So I think once Eric bets big, he has to call. If you wouldn't expect your opponent to check jam, king queen, king jack in spades, or be that creative, usually it's so easy just to second barrel, right? Especially in low six, mid six, people are not gonna end up check jamming their king ten or king jack in spades here. So then we have to bet for it because we're mostly just gonna be running into better hands, of course, and we're not gonna get the right price. However, against someone like Victor, it's probably fine to bet call your a7 in spades here to run it. He also has the chips and stacks to make some gamble calls and it's certainly gonna be fine here. Victor went all in, Eric called, and the nine eight suited head, Victor doubled up. And there's no excuse to not get better at poker. We have a free course, five days, no strings attached, completely for free, where we're gonna make you a better poker player in just five days, exclamation mark poker coaching in the chat, and you get more information. Wow, shout out to Mr. Ben CB breaking down that hand between Eric Seidel and Victor Malinowski as we welcome you back into the broadcast booth. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, for Heads Up. Heads Up in the main event, the 100K main event, the record breaking 100K main event here in Vietnam. It is Talao Shikurchi squaring off against Malaysia's Michael Soizer. Randy. Both players guaranteed 2,207,000. We're about to witness a heads up match for more than a million. For more than a million, yeah. What <laughs> are we about to see here? Two to one chip lead for Talao, 56 big blind average. Quite possibly the biggest heads up match they've ever played for. Two to one chip lead. Um, this is a big score for both players, but a lot more to play for. They're going to be swinging. We know Talal is the type of person to kind of get in there, battle away. Talal has been expected to kind of reach the final two just because he came in as a chip leader, has been maintaining that stack. But Soiza snuck in there. He did. Did some big plays. I was going to say. Got like, Smirkovic to fold some big hands. That's true. Not sure about snuck in there. It's been a swingy <laughs> day for Soiza, right? You know, the, the ace king against the ace 10 against the kings of Fedor managed to find that ace high flop. And he's been the first to admit that, you know, He's had to run well to get here, as a lot of tournament professionals will be the first to admit that it takes a bit of run good, especially against world-class competition. As we throw it down to the main stage for what is set to be an epic heads-up battle between Talal Shikurchi and Michael Soizer. Over a million difference between first and second. Two to one chip lead for Shikurchi. And also, Randy, worth mentioning, over the last two days, we've seen a ton of hands between these two. They were seated on the bubble next to each other, then into the money. They were also battling against each other. They played big pots already against each other, this final table. And now they find themselves heads up for over a million. This is the biggest heads up match of Michael Soyza's career. Biggest heads up match of Talal Shikurchi's career yeah. as well. A lot on the line. He's looking for his first Triton Trophy. Soiza looking for his second. 600. No time to slow down. Now's the time to play your best. Give it to your all. Here we go. Michael Soiza open raising the first hand of heads up. To law. You're going to be reaching a lot. <laughs> Two's five off suit. Completes. Shout out Secret Lab, by the way. These two gentlemen sat comfortably in the Secret Lab Triton collab seats. That trophy, the Triton main event trophy, as well as the custom Jacob and Co. watch, be going to our eventual champion. Diving back into this, a little piece for Shikurchi. Not going to let go of his hand just yet. In fact, opting to check yeah. race first hand. This is the guy that has been pulling all of the moves and making him so tough to play against on the ace eight four check raising to one point six million. Soiza with top pair. Yeah, just the inside straight draw, but top pair. Going nowhere. Not looking to really fault us at any point in his hand.
I like this from Talal, you know, just folding out a lot of the stamps rather than taking the passive line and Randy. He's got the straight. This could be it. This could be over. First hand of heads up. Over a million difference between first and second. Talal has turned the Jim. nut straight. Soiza drawing live still with top pair and a nut flush draw. Talal fires out a bit of 2.1 after check raising flop to 1.6 million. What a turn card. Well, as played for Soiza, he's got top pair, got the backdoor nut flush draw coming in. Gonna make a call here, it looks like. Keep his opponent honest. Hold on to the edge of your seats, ladies and gentlemen. This record-breaking 100K might be over in just one hand of heads up. Shikurchi check raising to 1.6 million on the flop. Barreling turn for 2.1, 8.9 million out there. Soiza with 7 million back. Talal going for some value. Gonna leave Soiza some chips, trying to make it easier for him to call. 2.45 million. Can Soiza get away for this price? It's just too good, isn't it? It is, but the line taken after defending the big check raise flop, unfazed by the appearance of the club on the turn, and now firing again on this nine of hearts river. So difficult. It would ha feels like you know it'd have to be a hand like five point six. In. Hold on. Lays it down. He got Talal to lay down a straight. Michael Soiza turns his ace into a bluff. This this hand could have been over, Henry. This the was the hand. It, we're still playing. And Soiza's the one collecting the chips without making a flush. How? Well, Michael Soiza turning his hand into a bluff on the river for arguably one of the biggest bluffs of his career and getting a snap fold from Talal Shikurchi who turned the five high straight came into this heads up match a two to one chip lead now finds himself still in this dogfight of course but after just one hand Soiza has taken the lead that is an option that I left off the table, personally. They're playing for a milli. First hand. 50, right? Epic. What a fold. What a play. They got a lot of stack to play for. I, I want this heads-up match to last. This is insane. King high flush, Marshall. Sorry? King high flush. Was it? King high flush? No. 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 <laughs> Awkward. It really is. It's finding out that if he just clicked okay. call for the additional four, four million, million, yeah, it's over. Or maybe if he just puts him in, you know, there's nine million in there. Michael had seven million back. Yeah. If he just jams, or bet bigger, where he wouldn't, Michael might not think he could jam anymore. He bets quite milky on the river. Wow, interesting spot. The heads up match is going to continue. Wow. Three dues off, suit opens next hand. Sorry? Don't see bet. Otherwise, you fluff me off the best hand. Well, unfortunately, we are playing for a million bucks, so you'll find out after the event. Regardless if I win or lose, you know. But yeah. Fair. Oh, in 30 minutes' time, I guess. Yeah. It's yeah. So is a. giving nothing away. And I can't blame him, as he mentioned, you know, playing for a million bucks. Over a million, the Triton Trophy, and a, a lot of stake here, you know, joining the two-time Champions Club. If he wins here, moving up to number three on Malaysia's all-time money list with a win here. There's a lot more than money at stake. But how about it? Shikurchi finding out that he got bluffed off of the winner. Will that hand come back to haunt him, Randy? Let's not worry about that yet, but very possible. 
pair of deuces for Talal. Something worthy of a check call. So is a three of clubs. Queen high. Three of clubs working with those wheel cards. See you bet. One third pot. 33%. Fun one. This tournament just keeps to the... Sorry. I'm you're just sat you're here. Stunned. You, you're you know. stunned. You guys at home obviously can't see us. Randy's out of his chair, pacing around the broadcast booth. I'm just slumped over my desk with my jaw on the floor. There's over a million difference between first and second. Talau just had to click call. We would have had a champion. After one hand instead, Soiza realizing... 1.8 million, right? That his hand was no good, turning it into a buff and getting the snap fold, Randy. I mean, put that one in your highlight reel. Well, that, that's going to make that's going to be a hand that gets watched over and over again. We, we're jumping back into the action. Shakurchi bottom pair, king high flush draw. Soiza barreling. Six point one million. Soiza misses. Hard to bet this one. 8x could check call, check call. 8x will be going nowhere. Can Soiza find one more bet? Deuces would have a lot of trouble calling for three barrels, but he doesn't know. Two. That's what he's got. Three. Let's flop that chip lead over to Law. 19.6 million in chips. Yeah, back it goes. Raid a lot. They're not playing small ball right now. They <laughs> are playing huge pots. All the history has been built leading up to this heads up match. Whew. Okay. You, you picked up your draw yet? <laughs> I mean, it's down there somewhere still. There's a few hands in. Blinds going up to 200,000, 400,000 with a four. 100,000 big blind ante brought to you by Poker Stake. That trophy, the Triton main event trophy, as well as that custom Jacob and Co. piece going to the eventual champion. Will it be going back to the hedge fund manager from the UK's home office or the APT CEO, Michael Soyser's office in Malaysia? Open ender for Talal. Gut shot, backdoor spades for Soiza. Open ender, good for a C bet. It's a half pot C bet. Backdoor flush draw, pretty important for Soiza's hand. Gives them some room for maneuvering. 2.7. Wow, he's aggressive. Check, raise, jack three. What, Blocking the flop straight. Got the backdoor spades if he wants to apply more pressure. But Talal going nowhere, open-ended. They are just swinging away right now. Haven't played many hands heads up. Yeah, I mean, we started off incredibly deep as Shikurchi turns the second night straight. It was one of those heads-up matches where I felt like, you know, there's over a million on the line. Randy and I can just ease into this hand mm -hmm. number one. Got the heart pumping. These guys just swinging at each other. To allow with the goods. Mm -hmm. Wow, Talal has checked the turn with the straight. Sneaky. Trying to give Michael Soiza some rope. The fact that Soiza checked when a four-liner came out there made it seem like he wasn't looking to put more chips into the pot. However, Soiza does have showdown value with the pair of jacks. 2.5. But actually... Turning to a bluff, trying to get Queen X to fold right now. Hmm. 
Well, we know Talal's not going anywhere. So is it going to be down to 7.9 million after this hand ends? That's what we thought was going to happen with that A7 hand as well. And then he jammed. True, but I don't think Talal is going to be losing this pot. Maybe a mini raise incoming. Small raise. Six point one. I think Soiza knows he's beat here. Would be a pretty insane call here. Or four million more in chips with just a pair of jacks. Four liner. Check raise flop. Check check turn. Bet raise. I just don't really see how he can be good. We're going to use a time card, just in case. We're reaching for the time card. You'd need Shikurchi to be turning a hand like nine, nine, King 9, eight. King 8 into a bluff. Like Ace King. Yeah, it'd be a bit ambitious, wouldn't it? Ace King, bet call flop. Hmm. Well, Soiza is not convinced just yet. I suppose he's wondering, did 10x really check back that turn against me? Yeah, these two have been really putting each other through the ringer over the last couple of days. Soiza did do a kind of a smallish bet on a river. Maybe he felt he's induced something. Yeah, after he checks call. turn. Oh makes the my. call. Soiza, incorrect call. Loses 10 million chips there with second pair on a four-liner. This is all to law. Oh, Soiza down to sub 10 big blinds. And as Randy said, this is all to law. Shikurchi with one hand on the trophy already. 88% of the chips in play, 9 to 1 chip lead, almost. Soiza clicking call after the turn went check, check, just didn't believe Talao. And he knows, you know, look, there's a lot. There's a lot going on here. This isn't just the, far, the last 10 hands that we've witnessed. We've seen these two play big pot against big pot time and time again over the last two days where Shikurchi has just shown up with the most unimaginable bluffs. Just checking. It's not, it's not 8-6. I'm going to have to fall. <laughs> Referencing the needle right there, that four bet pot from the other day, from yesterday rather. Law first to act, Jack Deuce off suit. Ten big blinds. And coming with a limp. Well, the limp likely to be met by a jam here. All in? Yeah, King Ten fares best a lot. Still not down and out. Michael Soiza, career record cash, regardless of where he finishes mm. here. Check the app. Mm. It's hard to tell the difference yeah. in the color of these chips. 4, 4.8, 4. 5.1. So still 13 bigs in Soiza's stack. These hands this, could yeah. clash. This could be it. 
This no, could sorry. be I, it. I could oh. Talal acted out of turn. It said all in. Oh, wow. But Soiza. So if I limp, he has to go all in, right? Nope. If I limp, does he have to go all in? Yeah. Oh. It's going to get. Limp, sorry. Okay. An official ruling. Oh. I thought limp was changed. I thought that is changed, actually. Hmm. So what happened was Talal <laughs> acted out of turn and said all in. Yeah. But Soiza did not act yet. Queen Jack. It's a big hand, heads up. <laughs> it's tricky now. Uh, yep. I can imagine. Really weird spot here. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. Shikurchi just acting out of turn. Happens. Announcing all in. Soiza now unsure, you know, is this just him jamming against the perceived limp? How many have I if so, is my Queen Jack good? Can I just jam and take down the million that's out there? Chip back up to six million. Fifteen bigs back in the fight. Do I limp call? Limp. There we go. There's your answer. So I have to go all in. Yeah. All in. Okay, so oh. he does have to go all in, and a call from Soiza gets shown. The ace seven of diamonds. Sorry about Fifty nine percent of the okay. time. I was thinking like if you shove, I'll call you anyway. Probably shove and I call. So. Yeah, yeah. Same, same thing. So same like, thing. does it change? Hmm. Yeah. Just here. The post mortem between Shakurchi and Soiza. 59% of the time, we're going to have a new main event champion. Five cards to come as the 6 6 5 immediately removes two of Soiza's six outs, giving Shakurchi the nut flush draw to go along with his ace height. Seven on the turn. Doesn't really change anything. Other than the fact that we are now one card away from crowning a Triton main event champion. King of Hearts on the river completing the run out and Talal Shakurchi, who came in as chip leader to this final table, Randy, has closed it out against a star studded final table, the 100K main event champion. Commiserations and congratulations, of course, to Michael Soizer coming up short for a record breaking career cash of 2.2 million. See, ladders up a few spots on Malaysia's all time money list as the two exchange a few words there. But how about it, Randy? Talal Shakurchi taking down his first Triton trophy in. A record-breaking main event, overcoming a field of 135 runners, going home with the lion's share of the prize pool. 3 million 250 thousand payouts brought to you by Poker Stake, of course. There you have it, Randy, after a pretty short stint in the commentary booth. We have ourselves a champion, a final table that could have gone on for hours. But maybe just the wrecking ball style of Talal, who did really just come out guns blazing into that FT. We saw, you know, Queen Seven getting open in late position from, you know, six handed, really leaning into the likes of Mateos and Fedor, and eventually coming out on top with the, the W. Yeah, and you know, even the heads up, right? You expected this to be a long match, feel each other out, but they were guns blazing first hand right away, right? We saw the Deuce Five check raise, gut shot. Hit it on a flush card. Turn, bet, call. River, bet, jam by the ace seven. Ace of club blocker. Fold. Like, that could have been the tournament ending hand on the very first one. And they had a lot of big blinds to play for. Somehow, they still are firing away 
every single pot out there, and it was a very quick heads-up match. Less than 20 hands. Less than 20 hands, and it was a milli more to play for. Doesn't surprise me one bit. These two have been battling against each other over the last couple of days. So there's a lot of history. There's a lot more than meets the eye of just, you know, this short sample of heads-up hands. But Talal coming out on top, raid a lot. Online legend, also quite the resume on the life out, now adding a Triton trophy in a main event. 3.25 million for him against a stacked final table. We're about to throw it down to none other than Ali Najad, who managed to grab a quick word with our champion. We're going to throw it down, but before we throw it down to Ali and Talal, just to let you guys know that we will be continuing coverage here from event number 11, the short deck has started, Randy. I know Ali and I are going to be looking to you to help us with the analysis. Anything that we can expect there? Because there are some faces out there that are here just for the short deck. I can tell you that Jason Kuhn and Makita are definitely going to be bracing, um, trophy hunting there right. for number six or number five, respectively. And there's a lot of action. It's a lot of fun to watch and very splashy. Well, four more days of coverage here from Vietnam with the short deck action just around the corner. But for now, let's throw it down to our main event champion, who's going to have a quick word with Ali Najad. Well, a record-breaking field of 135 entries ultimately had to be played down to just one here in Vietnam in our main event, and that one is Talal Shakurchi. Congratulations, 3.25 million coming your way, courtesy of this victory and the honor of having defeated perhaps, I think you would agree, one of the toughest final tables on memory on the Triton Tour. Yeah, that was a tough final table. There's some great players there, um, you know, like Timothy Adams and Fedor. Had to, on my left, I had Adrian Mateos and then, then Fedor. I mean, it was just, uh, yeah, the good players all around the table, actually. And uh, yeah, so, so yeah, it was tough. In mountaineering, oftentimes, everybody wants to climb the most difficult mountain. Call it Everest. Talal, it seems as though that is the cloth from which you are cut as well. You truly have a nose, almost an appetite for taking on the best. Why is that? Uh, well, I, poker is my hobby, and I, I want to play the best players, and, and uh, you know that's uh, how you get satisfaction out of any any activity that you do, is is challenge yourself and uh, try and do the best you can. Now you've been a part of some of the richest buy-ins that the Triton Tour has ever assembled. The Triton Million in London and of course the Coin Rivet Invitational in Cyprus where the fields are divided and some are classified as pros and others are classified as VIPs. But how much longer are we going to get away with designating you a VIP, Talal? Don't start moving me into the other zone. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not a... Uh... You know, I'm not a professional player. I, sp I spend uh, quite a lot of time playing poker. It's my, it's my main hobby. Uh, but I'm, I'm definitely not a pro. All right. Well, I don't know whether or not everyone is going to keep buying that just based on the, the performances that we've been seeing. A performance which, which has earned you not just the cash, but, of course, a trophy and our beautiful Triton Epic X watch. I'd like to welcome Kelvin in here from Jacob & Company. Don't forget the hat, of course. Talal's very keen on the hat. Kelvin, please, if you would... Let's start the uh, process, Talal. You might have noticed this on some of our other former main event champions. You get to join the club. Wear that with pride. And then we'll bring up Luca Vivaldi to deliver a slightly larger than average Triton trophy as well, Luca, if you would. <laughs> it is official. Talal Shakurchi, your main event champion.
Knowing where to start when learning to play poker can be incredibly confusing. Well, we have the solution for you. Our free five day course will teach you everything you need to know in five days to start making your first winnings at micro to mid stakes. No excuses for free. Check it out. at this final table. 95,000 ladder between 9th and 8th as we head to the 9-8 deuce. Flop so far so good. For the Czech Republic fans out there. Mateus with two overs running diamonds. And the that Queen of Diamonds rolling off. <laughs> giving Mateos 39% equity going to the river. King, Jack, 10, Diamond needed to eliminate Roman. There is the Jack of clubs. There's Mateos, Rivers, the King high straight, and we lose our first player of the final table. Just seeing Roman shaking hands with Alex Kulev there on the rail. Time to gamble. The yes, we Currently eight players left. He's locked up 418,400 so far for his efforts. Winfred here, ace 10. Oi. Has been chipping down. He's going to make a stance. Try to pick up some blinds and antis. Fedor holds has pocket kings. Go time. Oh boy. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. I got 1.6. Winfred, you looking for title number three. 
Fedor looking for title number three as well and in great shape against the ace 10 of Winfred Yu. We're just talking about how Fedor seems to show up for these big ones. So consistent. Flashback to the 200k Coin River Invitational. As expected here of two kings. Soiza. In the smaller ace king suited. We got a three way coming in, don't we? I don't think I've ever seen a setup as say as insane as this at a final table of oh, this yeah. size. As Michael does come That's over short. the top and Fedor. Looking to hold with the Kings to become not only the chip leader, but to eliminate both Winfred Yu and Michael Soizer. Soizer does have Winfred covered. So should Fedor hold, he would go home with seventh place money. How about this, Randy? Yes, six hundred. Oh, okay. <laughs> Two aces left. Three hundred and thirty-eight thousand difference between eighth and sixth. Ace on a flop. No way. One of two aces finding its way to the ace five deuce. Nobody with a club in hand. Winfred drawing to three outs. Fadal drawing to one out. As the jack of clubs <laughs> changes nothing on the turn. Nine of Diamonds is going to confirm the elimination of Winfred Yu. But more importantly, it's going to confirm the hold for Michael Soizer up to 6.1 million now. Fedor, nothing you can do with the two kings. Getting it in against <coughs> ace king and ace ten. We do lose Winfred Yu, of course, our two time Triton champion. One of the OGs of the Triton series has been to every single series, adding an additional. 418,000. Uh, he'd be tournament chip leader right now. He'd have more chips than Talal Shikurchi. Yeah, with it's, six left. He would, know, have, would have been down to six. It just seems like he's unable to kind of get these big confrontations to go his way deep in these Triton events. Yes, he is still in the tournament. He still has 23 big blinds, but that was that was a lot because not only if he wins that pot, he becomes chip leader. He also knocks out Michael Soiza and gets another pay jump for everyone. Now he's got someone on his left with more chips than him as well. Petrangelo, shortest stack. Fireworks. Ace King. Seems like a mandatory all in call incoming. 1.5. I think Petrangelo going to leave a little bit back, but is willing to commit all of the chips. It's going to fold around. For two to law, and I don't think to law is going anywhere with two tens. Right. Snap. Puts Whoa. Petrangelo. Not folding. <laughs> okay. Fair. Uh, Petrangelo gets shown the two tens. A fair fight. A good hand for a guy that plays eight six suited. Eight six suited. <laughs> little needle. Chest of <laughs> Talal's four bet yeah. pot. And yeah, we'll let it go, would it? I mean. <laughs> To, uh, to be perfectly honest, I did think you would have some of these hands in your range, but I can't, yeah, I can't know exactly what you have. So. You have to have some of those middle cards in your range. Yeah, yeah. Well, the post-mortem going on between Soizer and Talao as the ace high flop rolls off, giving <coughs> Petrangelo two pair and 91% of the equity with two cards to come. Four diamonds on the turn, changes nothing. Talao looking for a 10 and a 10 only. Otherwise, Nick Petrangelo is going to move up to fifth in chips. He does find the hold on the 4-3 yeah, run out. And and this really shifts things. 
at this final table, Randy. We could have been down to six with Fedor being the overwhelming chip leader. Now we're seven handed with Talao and Adrian tied at the top. It really is an unbelievable start to this FT. We knew there was going to be fireworks. Didn't expect to have multiple all ins inside the first level and a half. Don't forget Soizo, he got those aces cracked against two jacks, against Stevie. Now he's got some run good in this tournament. He has indeed, he's the first to admit. Smerkovic, he's been quiet this final table. Hasn't v pipped yet, 2-9's going to start. A limp. And you're going to see passive play with even with hands as strong as 2-9's when you're in the middle of the pack. You don't want to you want to avoid big confrontations when you can. Three clubs, monotone, one over. Even here, a hand where you might want to protect your hand is going to turn into a check at these final tables. Great turn card for Daniel Smerkovic. Perhaps he might value that now. Yeah, not surprised to no? see that Smilkovic hasn't been too involved with the presence of Talao and Mateus on his direct left, one of the worst seat draws he could have asked for coming in three of nine today as he checks on over to Talao, who, with the extended invitation... Yeah, nice spot for him. He's contained the pot, and he's induced bets from the chip leader. Playing it perfectly. As safe as it gets. As good as it gets, really, right? With a 10. Maybe Talal value that value owns himself. 6x, 5x. Maybe he stabs and he's gonna stab here. Talal is trying to just fold out one club type hands. Right. It's a sizable double barrel from Talal. Just want you to get picked off pretty quick. I don't think Smirkovic has much value in raising. Can eliminate it's not all folding. of the overpairs. Yeah, he's definitely not folding. I guess he's thinking about is there value in raising. One million. Yeah. Wow. It's really nice to see him find it. 1.75. One million seven hundred fifty k. And that's a good point you just made is that he's not worried about bigger pairs because he went to check through. Pre flop. Right. So he's only worried about 10, but 10 that didn't bet the flop. Unlikely. Sure. Nicely done. Daniel Smerkovic. Never really afraid. Always willing to splash. We saw that yesterday at our feature table. Mold. Down at the bottom, you know, Fader on 23. Timothy Adams sat with 26 bigs. Nicky P. Petrangelo with 29 bigs. Talking of. The real Nicky P. The real Nicky P. Two jacks. Good hand. Oh my Two god. Two aces. What is going on in this? This entire series, Randy. Every final table. Just when you think the dust has settled and we're going to be seven handed for a while. What if history repeats itself? I mean, don't you dare. <laughs> Soiza got an aces versus jacks and lost in the 70k final table out in ninth. The same thing could happen. Oh, Soiza here sat two of seven. Petrangelo, 29 bigs facing. Does Petrangelo have another play <coughs> besides all in? Can he sometimes call a three bet here? I mean, there's no clear short stack that he can wait for. He's looking around. He sees that everyone's pretty safe and comfy. Maybe he just piles it in, expecting a lot of folds. Jax is often very good here. I wouldn't blame him. Neither would I. Seven remain. Knows that Soiza, second in chips, is going to have three bet folds. He's going to be leaning into Petrangelo's On. mid link stack. And, wow. Well, Snap. Oh boy. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. This is a chip lead pot between Michael Soiser and Nick Petrangelo. 
7.5 million out there. Nicky P. Is coming back over the top for 29 big blinds with the Jacks. Soizer involved in that three-way all-in just less than an orbit ago. Now two cards away from being the overwhelming chip leader and more importantly, eliminating a very tough opponent. One of America's finest, Nick Petrangelo, looking for a jack and a jack only. <coughs> Biggest river card of both of their careers. Ten of clubs seals Petrangelo's fate, and <coughs> can you believe, Randy? Deja vu. Aces against Jack. We are down to the final six, but more importantly, we've lost oh. one of the game's greatest, Nick Petrangelo, out in seventh, getting that monkey off of his back here at the Triton Super High Roller Series in Vietnam in the form of four caches. Has to be thrilled with this run here, although. Maybe a bitter taste as he heads home with 566,000 to you by GG Poker, 50,000, 125,000. We've gone from nine to six. In the blink of an eye, everyone guaranteed 756,000 for their efforts. Man, they're just unbelievable scenes here. It really is because, you know, they were sitting on a, what? Almost 40 big blind average just now. You don't really get it in. Especially with people who are reasonably deep, right? Like, yes. they understand ICM. They're not going to get it in unless they've got some premium holdings. And that's what happened. Jackson to Aces. Well, that storyline that we were discussing <coughs> during the pregame show. <coughs> Michael Soizer with one title already to his name career best score of 1.42 million a win here would move him up to third on the all-time money list of malaysia second only to our founders paul and richard that in itself something to strive for obviously the 3 million 250 that comes along <laughs> i think with that's it. pretty good up top but you know it means a lot to him for sure um soiza is very well respected in the malaysian community as the one of the best Poker players, puts in a lot of homework, doesn't let his ego get into the game, loves it. Co-founder of the APT, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, and, you know, he's just very friendly, good on his head. It, it's, it's nice to see. Bounce this action real quick. Mateos has open raise from the small blind into the big blind and see that. Theodore Holtz calling wheel cards. It's a pair of fours. He will make the call here. His hand not defined yet. Mateos. Does he maybe lean in some more? It's it's tough because it's easy for Fedor to have an ace X here. But some of those ace Xs with just three bet jam pre flop. Let's see. Mateos does put his foot on the break. Yeah, Fedor is expecting to be ahead here a good amount. His hand is vulnerable, but does he really want to put in more chips in case he's wrong? We'll find out. You know, Mateos can get sticky at times with, if he's got a pair. Check through. Two pair for Fedor Holtz. Well, he's paying off no matter what bet sizing comes now. But Mateos. Does he think... He can move his opponent off of a pair that isn't an ace. Does not, so he's going to check. Yeah, Fedor. Disguised. Yeah, going to go for some value here, one would assume. Yeah, just is he going to target an ace X that played passively on a turn of river, or is he maybe going to get value from Jack X that turn? Depending on what he thinks, sizing will come. Big it is. It's a sizable bet. Million fifty announced. 
Mateos with just King High. And in the tank with King High, by the way. Yeah, you know, he is allotted some time due to the shot clock. King 8. No heart draws. No hearts in his hand, I mean, so he doesn't block the hearts he's trying to pick off. 8, not ideal as there could be some gut shots that call the flop. Lays it down. Expected. So one four in that club. Mateos looking for his first title. Talao looking for his first title. As is Smilkovic, Soiza, Adams, and Fedor. Already know how it feels to win a Triton Super High Roller Series event. Look at Talal, Queen 7 off suit in the cutoff. That's aggressive. Not standard by any means. Fedor Holtz, King 10 suited. Just under 30 big blinds. He knows Talal's been active a bit lately. I'll try to take a flop here out of position. We'll invite the chip leader, Michael Soiza, Jack 10 off suit. Are you surprised by this open? By Talal? Yeah, I would say so. He's still playing it like he's got the chip lead. Oh. You know, of course, Talal's got some unconventional plays in his playbook. But what makes him unpredictable definitely can be to his advantage. Three ways to the flop with some hands that you wouldn't expect, maybe. Off the pair. Inside straight for draw for Fedor. Middle pair. So he's a betting lead for Talal. Let's see it. about you, Randy, but I'm a big fan of this Talal Shukurchi guy. Yeah, just because he's raising Queen 7? You know, just he's just, out just here. firing as, as away. You predicted, you know, raid a lot. He's raising a lot. He's C betting. 275k. Fedor getting the right price to continue here with King 10 suited. Could hit a Broadway, could hit some backdoor spades, maybe a pair that might be good. The price is quite cheap. Yeah. Soisa lays down the best hand, Jack-10 in the muck. Well, with that, Talal has moved up to 61% equity. 80 on this four of clubs turn is a byproduct of the Fedor flat. Soiza getting out of the way from the big. 1.5 million in the middle. Well, Talal is trying to wait half and he's up against Asex and the middling stuff. He's going to check. 10 is good for Fedor Holtz. Connect with some showdown value. Beat like Queen 10, King 10. I'm sorry, same hand. He beats Queen 10. Random air. A check through and Fedor gonna chip up. Talal falls below. Fedor chips. Fedor holds his chips. Has he really? Closes the gap. Five big blind difference. Talal currently in third. Fedor in fifth. To clarify. <coughs> Timothy Adams, the short stack now, 26 big blinds. He's hanging in there. What an unbelievable start. This Triton Super High Roller Series main, record breaking, main biggest 100K in the history of the game. Those of you tuning in over on YouTube and Twitch, let us know, as always, where you're tuning in from, who you're rooting for. And more importantly, drop us a like if you're watching over on YouTube. See 7,000 of you currently joining us on the Triton Poker YouTube channel. It's free to click like, helps us grow the channel, helps us grow the game, and more importantly, helps us bring this free high stakes poker content to a wider audience. Who wouldn't want this game that we all love to continue to grow and go from strength to strength. We announced two more stops yesterday, I believe. 
Those dates were announced, so plenty more poker content from this series to come, as well as between now and Cyprus. I do appreciate each and every one of you for clicking that like button and being a supporter of what Triton is trying to build. Yeah, BBB here. Soiza raises just north of 3x. Gets called by Timothy Aft. King 7 offsuit. I'm going to go ahead and come in with a C bet. Hoping that Timothy Adams can't continue. It is a pretty dry board. Timothy Adams, King 7. King of Diamonds important. In case he wants to float, he's got some backup. King High, good sometimes. But it's awkward because it's not too many good turn cards for you. Just depends on how light he thinks. So he's, a, he's taking a stab here. Timothy Adams making a call here. King seven high. We got a hand brewing up here. Jack on the turn. Not a good card to multi barrel for Soiza. He could easily be up against Jack X. to six here. 100k made, 756,000 guaranteed for these final six players. Timothy Adams, King High. Certainly good, a decent amount. Perhaps he thinks that Soiza is just going to check fold a large part of his range. Going to reach for a time card. Deciding whether to bet or not. You can just put up any amount of chips. Well, if he comes in with a bet, he's going to come in with a smaller size, I imagine. Paired board. Don't need to go too big. Five twenty-five. It's over. Nice pickup for Timothy Adams, not letting go of that flop. Timothy Adams looking for his second main event title. Best career cash of 3.6 million. Getting an aces, that's 100%. Getting it in <clears throat> with aces. Okay, never mind. Let's move on, Henry. Go on, do tell. No, I'm not going to tell. I misspoke. Smerkovic in the small blind. Three do suited. Not too shabby. Not too great. Although the small blind is smaller than normal. Less than half the big blind. He's actually reaching for racing chips. Trying to attack Talal. That's yes, a big statement. Has overtaken Shakurchi. Talal's not going to get shaken off Queen 10 offsuit. How about it? He's 4 3. Smilkovich with the pre flop aggression. Bottom pair and a gut shot. Oh, just queen high. It's all about bottom pair being a good flop for three deuce suited. It really is. There's not. It can't get too much better. Talal just has queen high. Does he think that Smirkovich is out of line to make a call here? He does. This pot is going to be interesting. We know Shikurchi doesn't mind floating and getting creative on later streets as board pairs on the ace of pass turn and maybe Talal no need to get creative if he thinks queen high is good and has enough showdown I think queen high has a good amount of showdown he might not expect like king high is always about the flop too let's see how he wants to take this one he most certainly doesn't think of pair whatever fold turn 
take one off. Hits the 10, and Daniel Smerkovich in trouble. Yeah, there's a bit of fluff on about some block bet. Yeah, he's reaching for yeah, as little chips as you can think of. Almost a min bet. Now Smilkovic obviously more than capable of bet three betting in this spot. One hundred percent. Does that deter Shikerchi for? Going for value. No, just going to call with the queen 10. Showing the three do's and scoops an important 1.67 million chip pot. I mean, had he just fall, Hang is going to be coming today, I believe. From oh, is he? He's my neighbor, yeah. We literally live like two minutes away from each other. Oh, you guys are buddies. In Rawai, selling into the short deck main. A couple of bullets at 100k buy in, of course. I'm surprised he didn't come out for the no limit. Very well versed in no limit yeah. hold'em. I'm not too sure what the reasons for that were, actually. I, I asked the same question. He was just like, shut up, Henry. I'll be there for the short deck. I'll be there when I want to be. Yeah. Back to the action. It's my terms, right? Not your terms. <coughs> Suited queen for both players. Timothy Adams on the short end. Would be closing the action. Timothy Adams a real grinder. Good work ethic. Time I used to. Two. One by mistake. <laughs> Daniel Smirkovich has so many time I banks. Know it was my turn and like I had a three betting hand and then I needed to. Count. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is That's the second hilarious. one after we had really tough exposure. Right? That was against Tonato. Like the ace of Ah, what's, what's the just use one, <laughs> one, one time bang and call all in, you know. Just one. one time. Yeah. <laughs> Boss man. I was like, did I, did I not get one? Or, you know, just Biggest 100k and you're just out there bossing every move without using up any yeah. time banks. Yeah, he plays comp. Should have snapped him off. Mm -hmm. Watch him just play like a 10 minute hand <laughs> later. Nicer for the oh, special. this one. Potential to be a 10 minute hand as we head to the turn as Timothy has got himself in pretty rough shape on the queen six five after flopping top pair and he's very aggressive to Lao Shikurchi who has him out kicked. Adam's looking for a four or a seven. Yeah, Tal knows there's a lot of value to be had against these pair straight draws like six, seven. 7 8. Kicker is decent. Start with turn bet. And I really just don't see how Adams can get away against a guy who's been firing away. Yeah, I don't either. You know, there's backdoor flush draws coming in, more straight draws coming in. He's got backup in case he's wrong. Well, let's see if he can. Somehow find a way out. It'd be very hard to do so. Queen four. Adams already knows what it takes to win a main event. He's going to need to pull something out of the bag on the river, whether it be a four or seven or a hero fold, depending on the run out. It's the king of spades, and that feels like. That's a great card for him because I think Talal might shut down. Quick check. Nice pop for Talal. Moving back up. Separating and himself now. Yeah. Second in chips, down, closing the gap between himself and well, Soiza. <laughs> 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 actually widely regarded as the best non-pro in the history of the game. Has won pretty much everything there is to win online. Career best cash of 1.18 million. 974,000 in Triton earnings. Five caches. Did not 
expect to get six-handed this quickly, Randy. Nope. Ace nine. You're gonna try to put a little limp here. Maybe sometimes you mix in a limp jam. Check through. There's a nine. Smarkovich, no piece. Timothy Adams has been pot controlling a bit throughout this final table. No surprise, he starts here with the check, not looking to slow down. And here's the call. I'm sorry. Here's the bet from Smirkovich. Mini bet. Yeah, once check too. That Queen of Clubs, you know, some interaction. There's some turn cards that he can pick up equity on. And also nice to just stab here and get the fold from Adams. Yeah, well, Adams not going away. Gonna make the call. Trip nines now. Let's see if Adams quickly checks. Sometimes you would take the betting lead. Smerkovich. Nothing. Gotta be worried that Adams has got a piece. Six two five out there does check behind. As the three of hearts rolls off on the river and now potentially some value to be had for Timothy Adams. All the straight draws on the flop breaking, although that Queen of Clubs blocking some of those busted draws that Adams would potentially turn into a bluff. Yeah, very good point. Well said. Timothy Adams. Well, he's got to go for value. He could up be up against a 10x. He could be up against 5x. 800? 800k. That is an overbet. Targeting any kind of pair. Trying to make his hand look like a bluff. Going really polar. This blind v blind battle. That's Milkovich. Paying him off. Timothy Adams. Moving up to, and we say this facetiously, but eight six suited. I had to play. Pattern recognition is going to be a skill that every one of our top tier pros on tour have. They're paying attention, watching back. Oh, okay. I don't know about that, man. To get me back. I don't know about that. So all settling in. Two That's tenths just choosing to flat the smoke yeah. of it's open, Randy. Very, very important. Two wow. aces for Soiza. Number one and number two in the stack of the remaining six in this 100K main. This is kind of a nice setup for Soiza's three bet, too, because the flat from Talal sets the stage for what a lot of people would imagine is a higher frequency three bet squeeze kind of Take advantage. Yes. I mean, Soyuz has got the stack that is going to pounce. It looks like one a move. One the one time someone flat calls in position, there's a squeeze incoming. Mm -hmm. I don't think these two tens are going anywhere. Let's see. A lot of history building between these two. Sure is. Don't forget, he got Soyuz at a full two kings yesterday with eight high. Those cards. And you mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, maybe so to Shikurchi a little sticky in some spots. Nothing wrong with playing two tens in this spot. Right, but how do you play them? Okay, it's going to be for a call. So I will have the benefit of position here. But obviously, the disadvantage of being a four to one dog heading to this flop with tens. Eight high board, going to be a tougher one for Shikurchi to escape, certainly for the time being, with 2.8 in the middle. Does have that 10 of clubs, which is relevant. Yeah, this is a tough spot for Tawal. From the 
over pair Mycosoiza. This is the type of board where you'll see that a lot with your air. He is covered. Important to know. Gonna fire eight hundred. Really does. So it doesn't have much, too much to be worried about besides pocket dates if it opted to one wanting to even call. I don't think he thinks pocket deuces and fours would call a squeeze here. A quick call from Talal. Turn's going to be important. Another 1.6 in the middle. Pot swells to 4.4. .4. Now Soiza picking up a wheel gut shot. His texture continues to be an issue in terms of escape routes for Talal, Randy. Yeah, this is a very good card for Soiza in a sense that he's going to have some ace kings and ace queens that want to barrel the turn. Talal might read into that and put in one more call. So very, very bad card for Talal. Two million. Two million. It's, it's, not, it's a hefty price, but it's... It's going to be very hard for Talal to get away. Is it one of those spots where I'm trying to get back at you? Does he give Soiza credit to barrel to turn here sometimes? Wow, what a lay down two tens. Give it to Talal. Nicely Eight, executed. Six, seven, seven, seven. Wow. You got me if it was. You know, we talk a lot about Talal's. Maybe just the fact that we have so much ICM. Talal's the other big stack in the room. He just looks at the bigger picture, the macro of it, mm -hmm. and says, nah, Soiza's is not out of line here. Yeah, very well said because, you know, T Talal had more chips than Soiza in that hand. He could have busted him. Does Soiza really want to risk all of his chips in a situation with huge ICM implications? That's the question. Onto this he, hand. Back he to was back. really setting himself up, by the way, for something like that. But indeed, Shikurchi from tens to jacks, back to back, confrontations with Soiza, who is a flat caller with ace queen on the button. And Tim Adams, off of that lean 3.8 million chip stack, has an ace queen of his own. Back-to-back -back hands where we've seen someone flat call, someone waking up with the hand that can put in more chips. Adams, 23 big blinds. Just no other play than all in a face queen, especially against the open razor who's been opening very light. Mm -hmm. Two jacks. This is a cooler. Ace queen. Two outs dead. I'm expecting a confrontation here. And so is it getting away. Yeah, of course, if Shakurchi, as one might expect, decides to make this call, Soiza will be heavily incentivized to sit this one out Three, as eight. the clear overall chip leader with north of 10 million. Bullet. Yeah, Shakurchi jamming over the top just to make things official. And the loss of an ace or a queen out of Soiza's hands is a bad development for Adams. Over an 8 million chip pot. Yeah, this is a tournament defining moment for Timothy Adams. In rough shape. Two outs gone. Take a flop here. Ace in the window. Jack! Wow! Adams thought maybe there was gin on that board, but a seven, then a jack revealed in that order. Shikurchi hits the set and leaves Adams drawing dead on the turn. You can feel the disappointment yeah. and even the sympathy, by the way, on the face of both Adams and in turn Shikurchi. So much respect for one another out here competing at these levels and so much at stake. GG, bro. He did nothing wrong. Timothy Adams played great. Another fine performance for him in the main event because he shipped the main event before at a Triton series in the 100K. Add 756K to that young man's career Triton total, which certainly isn't done being accumulated. Of customer Talala is in 
those cash games, by the way, back in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Just loves the best competition, really. Not afraid. No surprise he's here at Triton. I mean, I just find it amazing that he's once again at the top of accounts in a huge buying event. 